Oh man, my ninjas, my ninjas. You fuck going on, man. How we doing? How we feeling? How we living, man? Doing. Good, man. Chilling. Yeah. Tired. Good, good to hear. Tired. Why you tired, Ash? What's good with you? Because uh, I had to help somebody move yesterday, uh, all day from like 11 o'clock in the morning to like 11 o'clock at night. Damn. Yeah. How the fuck good. would you do a 12 hour shift and nigga? You got paid in fucking like beer and Chinese like. Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese food and I, and I had like a drink and then I was like I'm going to bed. Man. I'm going home. Yeah. That shit was that, that shit was scrumptious, wasn't it? <laughs> it was pretty good actually. I'm not gonna lie, Chinese food was pretty good. Yeah, I, I I hate niggas that fucking pay you in food and beer. Like nigga, I didn't worked every muscle I had picking up your heavy ass <laughs> couch, pushing your bed through a doorway where it don't fit your bed frame, yeah. all that shit. Your dress is heavy as fuck without clothes. How'd you get it in here? How'd you get it? Minute, call the niggas that you got to, to put it in here. Yeah. Call them niggas again and get it out. Nah, it was, the fucked up part about that shit was like they had they had hired like professionals to get all the heavy shit, and we was supposed to just do boxes or whatever. But the niggas didn't show up, so we ended up having to like lift out the couches and all the other shit. They didn't show because it was the weekend, or like they on strike. No, they just didn't show up because that's they, fucking crazy. Crazy. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they did because it was like, all right, we're gonna have people help us move. We'll get professionals, get the heavy shit, and then have they'll just get you know all the small shit, little boxes on here, yada 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 yada. Niggas never showed up, so they had to do all that shit. That's what happens when you use like moving services, like two bros in a truck or some shit. Yeah, I mean, I don't know who they hired, but the niggas <laughs> not show up. That's fucking wild. Damn, it was lit though. It was cool. It's fine. It just sucked, but it is what it is. I mean, you got your exercise in, right? I got all the exercise I've had in like the last 30 years, but they... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's good. You ain't fucking pass out. You ain't die. You know, your muscles mm-hmm. are a little bit strong. You know, you know why your body hurt? Because you use the muscles that you don't, don't do it. In your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. I don't do this often. So my body's like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you probably lost two pounds and didn't even know it. Oh, I probably lo- I lost one that nigga. I'm sweating my ass all day. <laughs> fucking dripping. Yeah. Like I was whore in church. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Bob a lot, man. Yep. What's going on with you, man? How you doing? Oh uh, shit, everything's been the same. Um, there was some shit that the <laughs> that I seen that the shade room posted up, but it was some it was some common shit. We pro- we pretty much already know this shit. Like, um, it was the oh, thing. Oh, what, oh, where? It was like uh, I guess it's a California high school high school teacher. They said that Gen Z is like the less. They're like less educated, depressed, and lack of values than other generations. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's about right. that's about the fuck on. <laughs> fuck the internet. Uh, yeah. Sad, don't know nothing. Yeah. Yeah, there's that. I don't, I don't think yeah. they don't know nothing. I think they're misinformed. I mean, that's true. Plus, they inherited the earth that's going away, nigga. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> <earth Damn>. <laughs> No, nah, I just I, mean, I forgot what the fuck I was scrolling through some dumb shit and I saw something and I don't I ain't research it so I don't know how how much factual was in it. But it was some dumb shit where it's like the um Amazon rainforest is now producing more CO2 than it's than oxygen. Yeah. Cuz you know the trees are supposed to take in CO2 and then make oxygen, but yeah. now it's making more CO2 than oxygen. That can't be good for us. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> We Ugh. killing the earth and don't care. Yeah, fact. So you know we gonna die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you know the funny shit. I saw um a picture of I think a man who went to go visit like the Arctic icebergs. Yeah. He went to go visit them in like the fifties, right? And he visited that shit in like two thousand seventeen. I want to think bare bones. B they all rock. Like like when when he first saw the shit in like the sixties, fifties, whatever, mm-hmm. all ice, mad glaciers, frozen as shit. Went to go see that shit in 2017, 18, bare bones, all rock, minimal ice. I was like, yo, we gonna die. Yeah, we got another that's why they have another um ocean. <laughs> My nigga, yo, I, I keep seeing memes of this shit. It was like, yo, this can't be the heat that we, we grew up with, because this shit ain't the same. <laughs> like, yo, this heat is something different, dog. All right. Like uh, it, it, it was like I don't remember it being this humid. Like I've been in Connecticut my entire life. I've visited other places. I don't know what the heat like is there this time of year. I kind of do, but kind of don't. Connecticut is where like I know. 
it ain't never been this fucking hot, dog. Like it's been like <laughs> eighty some degrees, but the humidity make it feel like hundred and three. Cooking niggas. <laughs> like bear, like fucking bear, <laughs> raw. <laughs> 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 like you could cook an egg on a sidewalk type shit. <laughs> yeah, in Connecticut that's crazy. Yeah. In Connecticut that's fucking wild. And then, and then when it snow, we gonna get like eighteen inches, <laughs> or maybe we won't because of global warming. We will get like three and it'll fucking melt away in like a day and a half. Mm. I'm honest with you, I'm okay with that. No, yeah, I'm telling you, <laughs> yo, the earth is fucked up. Something wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna die before it get too fucked up. So it don't matter. Stop saying Damn, that. Dickie. But the earth is fucked. <laughs> Up, <laughs> like I don't, I don't want to. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna be alive in 2078 or whatever, fucking 99, whatever year. Nigga, I'm calling it by like 2035, dog. We all right, well that's a little different. Mm. All right, well that's 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 a lot closer. Nah, I'm talking like, <laughs> nah, I feel like you know the the fucking earth that the kids is inhabiting now is just fucked. And like, I know it, it was a certain company that they said they want to do all. Electric cars were like 2025 or something like that. You know, they want to reduce emissions yeah, and all yeah. this other shit. But these other white men that don't make cars don't give a fuck about none of that shit. They all about the bottom dollar. What make what make my world go around? We'll put more money in my pocket. <laughs> they ain't gonna stop doing none of that shit. They're gonna still feature just process cancer meat. They're gonna still fucking put <laughs> all these cars on the road. They're gonna still do all this shit that fuck up the ozone layer. And we can't, they keep, you know, they've been saying since like the early 90s that if you fuck up the Onso land, it's gone. Yeah, gone, gone. It's, you can't repair that shit. They should, they, they used to put that shit on, on uh, Rocco's Modern Life. It was like, mm-hmm. yeah, once you fuck the ozone layer and this heat hits you, it's gone. <laughs> you cook it. You fucking cook, nigga. Yeah. You fucking baby back rib now. Baby <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But who am I to, yo, ho, you know what? I'm kind of with what you said, Hesh. <laughs> Hopefully I'm gone. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, I'm realistic. I'm hopefully I just I ain't just gonna not be here to uh, see it. Hopefully. I'm just saying, if if there's a fucking god or like whatever higher powers out there, reborn me as like some shit that could easily be eaten. I, I don't want to be here long. <laughs> now nah, if it's gonna be this fucked up, yeah. it's fucked up. But it's like, yo, I don't want to be here long, dog. Like if like when I die and it's like reincarnation is a thing, put me as like a chicken. A chicken. <laughs> Like I got, I got a short, I got a short lifespan, like two years max. Don't put me as you put me as a rooster. <laughs> I get the fuck shit, and then when it's my time, yap my head off. Fuck shit, I'm scream in the morning. Mm. Yeah, dog, yo, I'm out of here, dog. Yo, throw up my wing. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Take me out. <laughs> oh. uh. How's your week? Uh, my week was cool. Uh, did nothing but work in this intense ass heat. Mm-hmm. Um, played a little bit of VR. That was fun. Oh, cool. Uh, other than that, did some trivia. That was fun. Getting getting in front of large crowds is like nerve wracking, but kind of fun. Yeah, I want to say because it's like. The, the only reason I do trivia is like to prepare me for doing comedy. So when I like I get in front of crowds, like I ain't fucking shitting on myself. <laughs> yeah. It's like I can like get in front of large crowds. I'm like, hey, these motherfuckers ain't here to laugh. These motherfuckers here to do one thing. And it's like, yeah. And then if I make them laugh, like, oh, that's an extra. But if I do a comedy club and these niggas is here to laugh, it makes it yeah, a little bit like, easier. Like I can do yeah. that. Yeah. So that's that's always cool. Um, I mean, I ain't do shit. Mm. I've been in the house. I've been I've been trying to get off work as early as possible, and it's just not been working. <laughs> I've been getting off latest shit, getting home, having like two, three hours to myself. Then, hey, go to sleep so you can yeah. do it all over again. Yeah, I'm quitting, no. so I have to. It's a grind, man. No, fuck the grind. I have to quit. Yeah, that shit hurts my soul every day. If people wonder why I don't talk to people while I'm at work, I fucking hate all y'all. I don't, <laughs> be I don't like you. I don't like this place. It's it's not even like. Well, it, it is kind of like I don't like y'all, but it's like I just don't want to be here as well. Because mm-hmm. yeah. it's it's also the fact that I've seen how they treat other people. Mm-hmm. Whereas like when people are out of work and how they'll talk about them and it's just like, I don't want to be a part of that fake shit. Like, yo, I know you don't give a fuck about me. If, if, I, get, mm-hmm. if I get fired today, ain't none of y'all niggas going to call me. Y'all don't know right. fuck I'm in the <laughs> you okay. like that. Y'all ain't going to like, you know, like, oh, damn, I bet. Oh, you want to go get beers after I get out of work today? Because I know you fired. You want to go get beers? <laughs> Like, ain't nobody gonna call me. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna fuck 
about me, man. Like, if I get fired today, nobody's going to call me. Nobody's going to give a fuck. So it's like, Facts. I don't really talk to people. But I like I, I say I, I say hi to who I need to, and then that's about it. Yeah, you know I don't talk to nobody at my job, nigga. <laughs> I know. One, you know. one nigga asked, yo, this was funny as fuck. Like, I don't know, dude's kind of new, so, but... One day ago, I was doing something, and he was like, yo, you speak English? Because, like, I don't talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, nigga, he thought, like, yo, this nigga don't talk. So he was like, yeah, nigga. <laughs> he was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> first word was, yeah, speak nigga. English. <laughs> you should have said, nah, see. Say, <laughs> or some shit. <laughs> nah, I didn't say, yeah, nigga, but that's it. was funny. Uh, I was in there, in the back of my head, I was dying. Like, I was like, damn, this nigga thought I probably didn't speak. I don't speak to nobody. So he probably thought I didn't talk because I don't speak English. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. Funny. I was yeah. dying in the back of my head. I was like, God damn, we know you got a problem with nigga that you don't speak English or something. <laughs> nah, no, only, only, only time niggas talk to me is when I get in trouble for something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yo, the fucking, like the, like the union steward or whatever. He was talking about, yo, <laughs> go fucking clock out on such and such and let's go talk in the back. I was like, no. Oh, <laughs> Uh, but, then, but then he talked to me about, about some bullshit and I'll be like, all right, I go back to work now. <laughs> yeah, soon, yo, soon, soon, soon as I get in a good space, I'm out with this bitch on all y'all niggas. <laughs> I'm feeling the same way. I be coming to work not giving a fuck. And that's that's unusual <laughs> because it'll be shit like uh like I work at a car dealership and sometimes it'd be cars going in the morning, but everybody leaves and I'll be there by myself, right? For like two hours. Yeah. And, I, and it'd be this car that'd be going at nine o'clock in the morning and the motherfuckers get there at eight. I said, you know what? I ain't doing that shit. So I'll just leave. <laughs> I'll leave without telling people. Then my boss will call me and be like, hey, Bobby, you can't. you?" Because he sound like um Hank Hill, right? He's like the black version of <laughs> He's like, hey, B- Bobby, you, 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 you can't. He got a stutter, right? <laughs> like, you, 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 you can't do that. Like, I'm like, nigga, I don't give a fuck about this job. I'm sick of this shit. Just fire me so I get unemployment. Oh, right. That boy ain't right. <laughs> Nigga, I've been working at my job for seven years. I, I ain't gave a fuck for five of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, not a, not a nail fuck. I just want this nigga to fire me so I can get unemployment, man. Unemployment? If yeah, I can get that same unemployment I was getting before, like that 800? Well, you won't. That's the problem. Man. You're going to end all that. I so wish. You, you you missed all the good unemployment. You're going to get the regular... I can't yeah, you're get the regular, regular <laughs> schmaggler shit. Uh, yeah, like, fuck it, I'm about to... I'm going to get evicted if I keep getting this kind of money uh, on the planet. <laughs> the crazy like, shit is, like, yo, I be thinking I want them to fire me, but then I be thinking about, like, the benefits and shit. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I say to myself, what is going to happen if my kids go to the hospital? Yeah. Yeah. And they ain't got no fucking insurance. Exactly. <laughs> so like, yeah, we're going we gonna, we gonna to take them to the fucking county. <laughs> like, nah, we ain't, we ain't going to take them to the good shit. We're going to take them to the fucking county where it's like, you know, niggas that's volunteering can fucking operate on your kid. <laughs> I just learned what medicine was yesterday, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna take it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, you know. Damn. Oh, we're I I I be I be pro for friend. Yeah. Pro for friend. I, okay. <laughs> I, I, I sound about right. Get your child fucking six hundred milligrams. Six hundred. That's a lot, dog. It seems like a lot. Right? I don't know. Just take a handful, throw it in their face. How many man they catch in their mouth? That's that's what yeah. they need. That's what yeah. God intended. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Gotta get. That's why. Get other revenue streams, though. Yo, how we all hit our jobs? <laughs> I shit, it, it. Just, it just, it just, it just becomes bullshit after a while. When you start adding up how much time you're there and how much you're making, it's like, yo, this don't seem right. Yes. It just, it, it never matches. No. Up. It just don't seem right. It's not. It's not that it don't seem right. It's not. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yo, you know what? You know what? Oh. Not that it's cemented in my head, but I've always had this thought. But this past. Friday, kind of like cemented, like nine to fives ain't me, dog. It was another nigga at my job who's been here 50 years and they celebrated him, right? Mm-hmm. 50 years, blood, sweat, tears, overtime, long nights, short days, whatever the fuck, right? They celebrated that nigga and they gave him a certificate. Mm-hmm. They gave him like a medal or like a pen or some shit to celebrate his 50 years. Mm-hmm. And they let him make a speech, and they gave him like a fucking pen for like he died. Like you know how you go to a uh, <laughs> funeral and they, and they get that little fucking hand, <laughs> like like somebody had to fold them shits. Like them shits wasn't professionally made. Like, somebody folded all them shits. They and they mm-hmm. gave him that shit. Four things. Nigga gave fifty years of his life. That's half a fucking century. Mm-hmm. Fifty years of his life to this fucking company. All y'all got. Yeah, y'all to get this nigga a check. 
cash he ain't bonus get or nothing. Breakfast. Nope. He ain't get a day off. Nope, no fun. Nothing. Free vacation time. No extra vacation. Free vacation. Like no, you ain't get extra points on your pension. <laughs> like nothing. nothing. You've nothing. been there fifty fucking years. The logo, the, the logo for the post office has changed two times since you've been there. <laughs> since the 1970s. Yeah. And they don't give a fuck about And then, like, the way that people was treating this nigga. And it was like, yo, I got to get back to work so I can do this shit. Like, nobody gave a fuck. It's a thankless job. Nobody cared. <laughs> I was just like, Those yo. Jobs are- I was like, yo, I cannot do this. Like, I cannot do this. Like, it's it's... Like it's it's a lot of shit I put up with, dog. It's a lot of shit I have put up with when it comes to jobs. This, I cannot stay here for fifty years and have people look at me like, "Yo, you was working here before I was born. You really fucking old, nigga." <laughs> <laughs> like that's 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 fucking nuts, man. I, order work. I, what happened? No, I'm saying order worked there for fifty years and it not like mean nothing. Mm. Like you. Like you didn't see hundreds of people come, go, first day, quit. This job ain't me. You didn't see people die, retire, all types of shit. You've been there for 50 years. And then when it's time to celebrate you, nobody in the office gives a fuck. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. I want whenever I die, retire, step away from some shit, I want to matter. Exactly. I, want to matter. I don't know. I don't know about y'all, whoever's listening. I want to matter. That shit. It's for the birds. I can't. I can't do that shit. Yeah. But until then, <laughs> I will be podcasting, and then you know, we podcast, podcast. on Twitch. On, mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, iHeartRadio, wherever the fuck you get your podcast. We just so happen to be there. Right. Three Ninjas Podcast at gmail.com for any comments, questions, or concerns. If you want your question answered in the Ask a Ninja segment, you can reach us there. That is Three Ninjas Podcast at gmail.com. Also, don't forget to visit our website, Three Ninjas Podcast.com. All types of new shit coming soon. I know people ask for like beanie hats or wool hats or whatever the fuck you want to call them. Um, might have something coming soon. It's not the uh style or you know thing I want to do, but, you know, you get what you ask for. If y'all niggas bought more shit, I could do more shit, and I would feel comfortable with putting out more shit, but this is called for honest. Y'all get what mm-hmm. y'all get. You know, you can represent the brand however you want, you know, throw up three, but um, <laughs> you get what you get. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that fucking circle with the little three dashes in it, y'all yeah. throw up three, all y'all want. But, you know, the idea that I had, I, I don't really want to do because it just costs more money, and then the return on investment don't really pan out so you know it's whatever <laughs> once we once we get to a level where you know y'all y'all gonna get everything thrown at y'all niggas y'all ain't, y- y'all ain't gonna know what to do with y'all fucking paycheck <laughs> um consider supporting us on patreon that's patreon.com slash the number three ninjas podcast everything goes back into this show i ensure you okay the nigga <laughs> you, you y'all wanna know something <laughs> the crazy shit right so the nigga that does our art, right? Mm-hmm. He hit me like three months ago. He was like, yo, another artist hit me. Mm-hmm. He was like, yo, the work you do, you should be charging more. I was like, shit. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck would somebody tell you you deserve more? Even though you fucking great <laughs> at what you do. And you probably do <laughs> somebody hard. tell you that you deserve? <laughs> that you, you know, deserve. you know, you know when it's like, you know, you dealing with a woman and you ain't shit, but then her girlfriends <laughs> tell you like, yo, you deserve. You deserve. That nigga ain't shit. He treating you like this, that, and the third. You deserve better. But then you keep going back. This time she went back with stipulations. <laughs> <laughs> so if y'all could please support that Patreon. Because I think I'm going to start tanking niggas. No, 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 no. Maybe no. I deserve. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, when I tell you. Okay, so. If, if you've been listening to the show since day one or since year one, right, you know the end of the year drones that we do. Uh, we usually do a, a like a little collage of all our guests and shit, right? That shit ain't been cheap for like a lot of years. <laughs> and this year, price to, yesterday's price <laughs> is not today's price. <laughs> Sans Fat Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so if y'all can support that Patreon so we can, you know, give y'all this 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 art that would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not obligated. 
Not I'm just saying, if you happen to fuck with us, you happen to have the dollars. I'm saying. Or at the very least, share all our content so that we can share our content. That helps. Just tell somebody that tells somebody. If you want the blur account, yeah. tell somebody that knows somebody that loves somebody. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We have a Twitter. We have a TikTok. We have a YouTube page. Like we're everywhere. There's things you can share with other people and show them. Everything's the same name. Three Ninjas Podcast. No on spaces. Okay. No underscores. Yeah. Same shit. <laughs> Yo, speak, speaking of that, that reminded me of uh, Daquan, right? Daquan Wilshire. Because oh, yeah. I, be, I be following him on Twitter. And uh, Twitch, sometimes I catch his show, right? And he put up a picture. Oh, is that some V card? Yeah. Like he, t- yeah. He, t- he put up a picture of like um, his monetization from YouTube. And he it was something he did that was like a minute, like uh, two, three years ago, right? It got over like a million views or some shit like that. But he only got $4 off of it. <laughs> yeah. One of the reasons why was because of the algorithm. Like they changed the algorithm so you can't curse within the first... 46 minutes or some shit like that and they just they just oh, they just oh, hit God. the shit out of your <laughs> yeah, what so that's, that explains yeah. a lot yeah in order to make at least a hundred dollars we need to not cuss within the first like 20 whoa fucking hour two hours <laughs> then... no that ain't happening that's <laughs> never gonna happen so we need to hit 23 million views in, in order to make <laughs> dollars. so you know if y'all can make that happen somehow some way that would be greatly appreciated. Um, consider so, uh, joining our Discord. That's a great place. Uh, the link is now permanent, so you can join that. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, all that good shit. TikTok, you can see our reels. And um, this week, because we kind of ran over on time, uh, we're not going to be doing questions. So we we get to y'all next week. Um, next few episodes might be at home. I don't know. It depends on what's going on with G. Uh, oh, something else going on? Nah, nothing, nothing bad. Nigga going on vacation. Uh, so, uh, so. Okay. Oh, that's what he was telling me because he's going to go do something for his mom. I forgot, right? No, he did that shit for his mom. Right? He just going away. Oh, <laughs> using all our money. And that nigga got <laughs> that nigga got the money. <laughs> Take him and like fucking five kids to fucking uh. <laughs> Cape Verde, nigga, <laughs> for like oh for like two weeks. I don't want to put his business out there, but that nigga gone. <laughs> By the time you hear this, he gone. Um. <laughs> so next few episodes, ain't nobody got COVID. We just got nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, reviews, man. On to reviews. Fuck the questions. We all tired. It's late. Let's fucking. Knock this shit out, get this shit to y'all so we can fucking go. So Titans or Marvel? Marvel's what if? What we doing first? Do Titans. We can do Titans? Yeah. Didn't watch it. <laughs> didn't finish it. You didn't finish it? I nah, cause Friday. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. Friday, I hope them niggas paint the new house a little bit. So <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> well, how far did you get? I watched him go see a psychiatrist. And that was it. And then he got thrown into the pool. I think I got that far. Oh, okay, so. that, you didn't miss. You didn't miss much. You didn't miss okay. much. So yeah. what I watched was uh, Scarecrow talking to Jason, and then he gave him some more of the happy juice. <laughs> <laughs> the happy and juice. Then the dun 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 dun. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> oh well basically the whole episode it was about um i gotta hold you i i could have watched that shit but i've been too busy watching sopranos though yeah <laughs> and i've been seeing tweeting about sopranos every yeah. day nigga. it's like but soprano tweet every day yo it's, it's you know, one man. character up there that that's so unauthentic that it gets on my fucking nerves Sil- silvio he is so fucking oh, yeah, fake. He's fucking like, yeah, he is so man. yeah, he was so fucking stereotypical man. as a fucking Italian. Out of everybody in that fucking show, him. Like it's like, yo, if you just X him out, <laughs> he always got that fucking look, the, the Robert De Niro look like like I mean, yo, I can't I can't wait <laughs> until on, we do this fucking uh Sopranos breakdown. It's two uh, characters I can't fucking stand, yo. <laughs> like 
cannot stand for the life of me. Uh, but yeah, uh, the the is right. Uh, basically, the whole episode was about it was like a flashback episode of how he came to be what he was, and one of the things was you know it was it was pulling from the second season when uh, you know Deathstroke kind of inflict fear into Killed him, him beating his ass and yeah. shit like that. So he was like kind of killed that nigga. Yeah. Yeah, he pushed him out. He drew him off the uh, roof, and he was covered from that. Yeah, yeah. So this motherfucker was upset. Uh, he went home, and I guess I get. Wait, was that around the time? I, Cause I forgot what happened at, on the second season. Didn't Dick thought, um push him away or some shit, something like that? No, he, because he he, he was, was with uh being homegirl. Tough on him. Yeah, yeah. He's being like t- yeah, he's being tough on him all that shit. So I put, and he's being like a little. Yeah. Uh. Do. yeah so <laughs> yeah so they was just like sort of beefing um i just know i just know that he went because i guess he was he's um acting erratically so bruce is like hey man you gotta go see my psychiatrist because you're acting wild wild and he's like all right dog i'll do it <laughs> and then i guess when talking to her she had happened to have been a victim of scarecrow yes yeah, scare so talking. yeah so after have talking to her he kind of was like I don't know. He got the idea in his head to like betray Batman for whatever reason. Like I don't. That's what I'm saying. I don't really like. Eh, it's like whatever, but so he went to go see Crane, and Crane was like, "Yo, I'll help you reverse engineer this toxin to take away fear," which, I, which it did end up being. That's what we was talking about last week. He's like, "You're gonna do that, uh, but in order for you to do that, you gotta give me all the secrets of Batman." Mm. So he basically betrayed Batman. I didn't like that shit. And then I guess as a test to see like the the. And then I guess he's working on the formula, so they show him doing that. And I guess the, the final one of the final versions of the formula, he's like, all right, just to test it to see how it works, you're gonna go go fight Joker. So then he did go fight Joker, and Joker really did kill that nigga. Yeah, so nigga's that, face so was all happened. off. Yeah, yeah, he smashed the nigga whole <laughs> shit in. Yeah, he showed it. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> and then um I guess in the in Arkham Asylum. There's like a, a Lazarus pit in there for whatever fucking reason. Which is convenient Crane as fuck. It. I'm like, I know. Come on, man. Like, really? And Crane has access to it and he knows about it. So I was like, all right, well, I guess. And then he goes, <laughs> Jason and Ned, and he comes now. He's reborn. He's like, now you're going to be the new symbol of Gotham. And then I stopped watching. Yeah, that shit was like, <laughs> it, it, was, it was like plot convenience. It was like, you yeah. mean to tell me this fucking pit is just sitting here and nobody knows about it but your ass? Yeah. <laughs> I thought Roz plus, was gonna show up or something. Like he's like, yeah. the fuck. Plus he got, plus he had like a whole like laboratory room that he just had and nobody knows about that he's just doing shit in. But I guess it is Arkham, where the one place you believe niggas because Joker gets out every other week. Yeah, but I guess yeah. why wouldn't he have a secret room that has a Lazarus <laughs> pit in it that niggas don't know about? Why the fuck not? Yeah, but yeah, that shit's crazy. But um, yeah, after that, um, he took a shot of the shit. He took a shot of the shit. Um, the fear. The anti fear toxin, something like that, and then yeah, whatever. Yeah, then he started uh, going to work on niggas. So it was <laughs> it was a <laughs> it was a time where it was one of these dudes who actually worked close with the Joker. I think mm-hmm. remember remember the um the, the the dude that was sitting on the car and then uh, Jason was uh, talking to this chick and he was like, "Yo, we about mm-hmm. to run down on this dude right quick." And then like he put the guns in his head, and he got scared, and he just got pissed yeah. away and got fucked up. <laughs> Oh, was that in this episode? Or yeah, yeah. I guess it was this episode. Okay, yeah. yeah, he got fucked up, yeah. and then uh, that's that's why he even went to um, Crane because he was like, "Yo, I'm too scared to do anything. Like, I just froze and got my ass beat. <laughs> like, like this yeah. shit ain't this shit ain't working." So uh, he ended up finding him again after he was Red Hood and just mm-hmm. no murk that nigga. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it's see, see, this is when I'm kind of th- this is when the story is getting kind of diluted. Because it's mm-hmm. like he's not a, he's not really a bad guy, but then you killed Hank. But I kind of understand because you was on the fear toxin, so you was like you're not in fear of consequences or nothing like that. So you just did it. But yeah, it's it's, it's still kind of confusing because with the chick, he was being nice to her, but it's I don't know. It's it's, it's kind of weird to me. I'm I'm also gonna assume that Crane is doing something funky to that formula, and it's probably making him susceptible to like mind control by crane is what i think is going to end up probably being because he's the one who made the formula and, mm. you know, and jason ain't no fucking chemist so he don't know what the fuck he's inhaling he's just doing drugs and because he's a dumbass maybe it has ivy toxin know. in it or something i'm sure it's gonna be something like that where he wrote it up so that he'll 
only listen, he'll listen to Crane's orders and be more. Yeah, you know, if it has Ivy Toxin, I would, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a pass. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be, it's going to be something along that kind of line. Yeah. We'll find, we'll find out. But yeah. Yeah, because I think, um, was it this season where, um, Somebody, somebody had something like that when they was mind controlling people, but it looked, it looked kind of like Ivy Toxin. Oh, was that last season? I was it last season? I know. This season? Um, homeboy could like teleport into other people's bodies, and he was controlling people. Mm. I don't know, but it got to be Ivy, Ivy Toxin to convince me. Whoa, he died, didn't he? Oh, did he? A Slade son. Oh, yeah, when I could teleport into bodies. Wait, did he die? I could have he jumped to the slave's body and then they killed him. Oh, like, yeah, you right. I, got, I, got, I haven't rewatched season two in like how long it's been, so I don't really remember. Like two years? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I, I don't really remember, but I feel like that's what happened. I think, yeah, because it wasn't, um, wasn't Dick like all sad about it and shit? Like, yeah. Yeah. But that was basically the whole episode after uh, he came out of this yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Crane's definitely doing something. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, Marvel's What If, episode three, season one. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's a season two or three in the works or it's been renewed already, but you know, season one, we got that for now. Yep. Yeah. Um, this is What If We Lost All of Avenger, All of Marvel's Strongest Heroes or the Avengers team, basically. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, um, I did see this and, okay. um, I ain't gonna hold you until they killed uh the Hulk? <laughs> no, until they killed um Clint, mm-hmm. I was like, what the fuck is happening? And then yeah. when they killed Clint, I was like, all right, I get it now. Like it it, it didn't take that long. When they when they killed Iron Man, I was like, what the fuck is happening? When they killed yeah. Thor, I was like, what the fuck is happening? When they killed Clint, I was like, you gonna tell me this fucking airtight shit? Somebody like he just died. I was yeah. like, all right, this gotta be fucking Hank. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, yeah. I I didn't figure that out until they revealed it. I was like, yeah. I nah, I, I figured that out mad early. <laughs> nah, I, I didn't get it. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, why the Hulk just fucking he exploded? Like I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> nah, because like, when man. when the, when he shot that nigga in the arm, I was like, that's not the last of that arm shot. Like <laughs> Hulk Hulk skin don't get penetrated, and this nigga got shot. I don't yeah. give a fuck if it's Bruce Banner or not. Hulk, if he'd have got if he'd have got shot and turned into Hulk, he'd have popped that bullet out. <laughs> Shit was still in there. And then the nigga at the right time, the nigga squash wound. That nigga hit, hit him with that. <laughs> what was that shit that blade hit hit that nigga with? Hit fucking Ryan oh. with. It. That nigga, yeah, bring, that nigga bubbled up. Yeah, yeah. The, antidote, the antidote or whatever. Serum. That nigga, that nigga Serum. hit him with that blade in the dope. That mm. nigga, boom, 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 boom. and then I was like. How canon is this? Because has no one ever figured out how to kill the Hulk except the well, smartest you, man and one of the smartest men in the fucking galaxy? How do you get to his heart normally mm-hmm. if you can't get inside his body? So you're telling me Hulk. nobody in the... Okay, so everyone in the galaxy is knowing of Hulk, right? Well, I assume, right? Mm, kind of. Not really? Depends. Not really. <laughs> He's on yeah. Earth. He, Fought a nigga out Harlem and then so <laughs> he fought a nigga out <laughs> and then he fought some giant aliens in the sky. Like, I mean, if you Hulk have movie. impenetrable skin and if you're a human man that you've been, has been exposed to gamma rays and they don't know how to kill you, I'm pretty sure someone that's a bad guy, unearthly, probably figured out. Hey, well, also this takes place before Avengers One, so this would only be his first movie, like after the first movie. Mm. Where he fights right. Nigga Harlem, he fights Abomination, and that's yeah, you're it. Right, so it's not right. like mad people know him. He didn't even so get a chance to nah. fucking get his ass beat and then fucking slam. Nah, mm-hmm. exactly. None of the Thanos shit, so none of that. So this is before any of that could happen. So nah, blew his heart up, nigga. So basically, this was <laughs> an episode of like, what if, what if we lose our uh, our heroes or whatever? So it starts off that uh, uh what the fuck. All right, man. Nick Fury and um Black Widow are recruiting the Avengers now, right? So they, yeah. they meet at the diner with uh Tony Stark, and then Tony Stark gets uh 
they so so it was after Iron Man one and Tony has the thing in his chest or whatever. So they want to slow down the fucking uh the stuff that's actually killing them. So they give him a shot in the neck. And Iron Man one it slows down the shit going through his body. But in, in fucking what if shit just straight up kills him? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not what happened. So well, this is for this is so um Iron Man two Thor Incredible Hulk and I guess maybe I don't know about um. Captain America, but anyway, those three movies are all take place technically like within the same week span of time. Yeah. Um, so they're in, like canonically in the in the movies. So um, so obviously what go ahead, what brother, happens, activate. You got this. Yeah, activate. <laughs> so what happens is the the villain ends up being Hank Pym. Hank Pym. So what happened? Yeah. So I, uh, the original Ant Man, because his daughter died and he gets mad about it because mm. she I guess his wife is his daughter daughter so that's that's why he's walling out his daughter so i guess in this the the nexus event here is like she ends up she somehow ends up being um an agent of shield and yeah. she ends up dying she he's ends dying. up dying for, for whatever reason so he's mad so what he shrunk down and so when she was because in iron man to the the shit he has in his heart was poisoning him and whatever so what they had done in the original movie was they shot him something to like sort of slow down counter- right yeah, counteracted. But I got vaxxed up. Pretty much. <laughs> but in this, I uh, Hank, I guess he he shrunk down and did something to kill Tony. So the whatever they had in there didn't even get in his body. So like he just yeah. entered his body and killed the nigga. <laughs> and then he uh made it so that Clint shot an arrow through Thor's heart when Thor was a human still on Earth. He died. And then I ain't gonna hold you. I thought str- I thought Thor was stronger than that, dog. Mm. Not when, well, he not was human. Older, when he, when yeah, he, he was human at the time. Trans- yeah, yeah, he was human when he got transferred uh, down there. Because this is, takes place during Thor one when Odin was mad at him and he yeah unworthy. Kicks him down to earth. Yeah, uh, kicks him yeah, down yeah, to earth yeah, and yeah. Mir Mir was on uh, in <laughs> <New> Mexico. <laughs> yeah, and he's, and he was a human and shit. So then when he got shot through the heart, he died. Then after he did that, he killed Clint somehow because you know he's a human. And he shrunk down. What he did was shrink time. down and sneak under the little air. T- Tight seal thing, getting his fuck. I don't know what he did to his fucking head, but he went through his fucking <laughs> earlobe and came out. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> nigga fucked his whole brain up. Yeah. Choked his aorta out or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, Medulla oblongata. You ain't feel shit. Exactly. <laughs> so basically, he's just going around killing all the Avengers because he's mad. Um, but then because they killed Thor, Loki shows up on Earth because like kills brother, and he basically try at the end of everything. He's like. I like this planet. I'm gonna take it over. <laughs> <laughs> so then yeah. now they're gonna now. So now Nick Fury's alive and he's like, "Well, we gotta do something new." So he he used the pager earlier than he he used in the canonical MCU, which he should have used when the fucking giant world <laughs> things came out the portal. But that's a different yeah. question. But anyway, so Captain Marvel's gonna show up, and then who else was there that they had? That I forgot. There's some other nigga that was gonna be because basically he's gonna do their their new version of. Avengers to take out Loki. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I forgot who the other person was. Yeah, it was Captain America. No, it was, it was Marvel. Uh, Captain somebody Marvel was somebody. I can't remember who else was there at the end. I don't remember. I know Captain Marvel showed up. Mm-hmm. Who the fuck else showed up? Because Black Widow died. Yeah, Black mm-hmm. Widow died. Hulk died. Thor died. Clint died. Because the other person was in the car, right? Who was in the car? The other person, and then Captain Marvel showed up, out, sh- showed up outside the car. I'm talking about, okay, so where's the fight? Yeah, Man. yeah, yeah, yeah. Who the fuck else was in that car? I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. Are we I this dumb? This is, yeah, nigga. Plus, it's late. This is why they don't love us as blurs, man. <laughs> 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 I don't got, I don't got time to be retained. We don't be fucking writing down <laughs> notes or nothing. Yeah, we don't. Probably should start that, but that's, that's a good point. But I just be watching shit on the go to work. Nigga. Then we try to remember it off the rip, and then three to... weeks later, yeah, <laughs> fucking stupid shit. Yeah, it is what it is. Man. These niggas like it. Fuck them. Yeah, yeah. I know, fuck right? <laughs> um, out of the three episodes, where does this one rank? Other than the first one, not yeah. as good as the Chala one. Mm. All right, so we go on three, two, one. I mean, two, was, two, two, three, one. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it was good to see, like, uh, how um, showing Ant Man could actually be kind of an effective killer in a, in, yeah. a, in a different way. With prep time, I guess, with prep time, Ant Man could be a killer, which is cool. Well, it was Captain yeah. America. Oh, yeah. Because oh, it was kind of America. He did go out the ice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did go with the ship. Yep. Yeah. You're right. Fuck. 
I mean, that's kind of all you need, right? Mm. No. Nigga, you need somebody worthy and one of the strongest Avengers ever? Mm. Oh, I didn't even think about that. He can pick up Mew Mew. Oh, yeah. He can pick up Mew Mew. (laughs) Oh, that's season two? That's all you need. Man, that's all you need. And then they could win to Soldier because he could, and he could be the new Captain America. Oh, shit. That's all you need, doggy. <laughs> and and then I don't know where which Nexus event, but if T'Challa's still around, you could get that nigga too. Mm. That's all you need, doggy. It's mad time. Oh, we in here, like one way. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to see if nah, that, that's probably not the thing. I, I was trying to see if like all this is within the same universe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know. Or is it separate? Uh, separate. I that's you know that's one thing I don't. No, nah, that's that's what uh, Jeffrey Wright said. He was like, "Yo, I'm I'm the the, the fucking overlooker no. of all this shit, and it's like mad different timelines. So this is why it's what if." No, it has to be different. Yeah, this only, is all, all, it's all only different be, timelines. Only because Peggy Carter didn't get frozen, she got teleported. Oh yeah, yeah, because you got Captain America. Oh, you're that's, right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. only because of that. Yeah. So, so it's different. It's you think they different. purposely put this after Loki? After Loki? Yes, they had to. Mm-hmm. Like they had to, had to, like, because it, 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 this only exists because of Logan. I mean, mm-hmm. it. Okay. Like, if if we're talking about canonically, yeah, I mean, no. Yeah, multiverse shit. Like, oh, yeah, you can be like, oh, here's just a cartoon of dumb shit. And like, I mean, you don't no. have to make it canon, but you could just make it like the offshoot of just like some fun shit. Like, hey, we're having fun. What if? Yada, yada, yada. They can do whatever the fuck they want at this point. Like, they, they got it. <laughs> they earned that shit. Nigga, they, they 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 got me shit. <laughs> they have what ifs all the time though. It's usually interesting. Like the the best what if I seen that was kind of wild was the fucking old man Logan. That shit was crazy mm-hmm. because fucking uh, Bruce Banner was was he got some kids like because he was fucking like his he, he fucked his cousin he fucked She Hulk <laughs> and they made kids and then them niggas was like Bushwicks or some shit. I mean, who <laughs> was gonna was take crazy. a powerful dick? <laughs> Not my Not that shit was crazy though. That shit was hey, crazy. Hey. I was like, "What?" I ain't got that many choices, and I'm feeling yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was the only the one he could shoot world. the club up with. But it was crazy how they how they described it. It was like he can't he can't ejaculate in anybody else because his, his his shit is radiation. So so it's like yeah, it's like somebody gotta take it. Like <laughs> take my strong hand. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. That's what happened. Bobby I was did. like, "What?" <laughs> Why are you saying that when Bobby did it? Bobby what, did whatever. it. <laughs> <laughs> what take the strong? Bobby said he got some near near kids. <laughs> you didn't say shit. You think you put the head up and all that? There's some incest babies. That's what he got. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, now we're moving on. Topics. Let's go. That shit was crazy. Yeah, I'm sure. Topics. Let's yeah. go. Sorry. Uh, wonder, what, what is it? Uh, what's, what's, up, what's first? Shit. What, wonder, we, wonder yeah, years? What, what is that what's up first? I don't know. What was up first? <laughs> Dude, wonder years. Fucking, oh, try, try to speak bad. Yeah, no, nah, fuck that. You said too much. This is why they hate us. <laughs> That's part of it. Uh, y'all, I'm fine with wearing Most that badge. Most hated, by the way. never collaborated, underappreciated. Yo, I was thinking about that shit at the while. I was pissed, but then I was like, you know what? I'm fine wearing this badge. Whatever. <laughs> whatever, dude. <laughs> I'm fine wearing this badge of disapproval. Yeah, whatever, dude. We don't sound like y'all. We ain't y'all. Fuck y'all. <laughs> we we walking motherfuckers and look, we looking at us in shame at because seems like oh, it's Game. dead niggas. <laughs> Game. <laughs> oh <sighs> man. <sighs> Topics, man. Yeah. Uh, the Wonder Years trailer. Yeah. Did we all see it? Yeah. Yeah, I watched it. How you feel about it? It was cool. Yeah, it's I, cool. I, I, I chuckled at a few things. <laughs> um, I'm like, eh, it is what it is. It doesn't. I don't think it's gonna be something I'm gonna watch. Like it's not, <laughs> but maybe there's people out there who watch it. But I'm like, eh, I watched the shit, and the whole time I felt like we didn't need this. <laughs> That's fair. Probably don't. Uh, well, we don't need most things. Man. We don't need this. Uh, we need lots of shit, but we still watch it. No, I mean, okay, I understand original programming. We need original programming. This, I feel, I'm old enough. See, the thing is, right. They reboot shit that people remember. Like the niggas that like like if niggas was to reboot like I Love Lucy or like some wild <laughs> shit from like the fucking fifties or forties, like a lot of them people are dead. You can reboot some shit from there. <laughs> you reboot yeah. some shit that niggas like fondly remember, like from the eighties. Mm. Your daughter don't know nothing about the Wonder Years, I'm sure. Yeah, but you know what? I'ma tell her. I'm a lumma look, look at what she watches. Like, you know what? There used to be some white kid named Kevin, and he's the fuck with this bitch <laughs> named Wendy. And da, 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 da. 
And now she's like, a nah. mathematician. Yeah. <laughs> mathematician. And then you know what happened? He finally got the girl in the end. They live happily ever after. Now they got mad kids. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah. <laughs> Uh, the same shit that's gonna happen here. He, he gonna be some black girl in, in elementary school that he fell in love with. They gonna end up in. What if that's yeah? What if that's the precursor to Blackish? Oh, be lit. <laughs> he's the um. He's Lawrence Fishburne. Hmm? Yeah. Let's do. Did your daughter do porn? Yeah. Why didn't they just do that? <laughs> Why didn't they just? But wait, wait, I heard it, but. <laughs> Bad chocolate chips on ass. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> That's the funny shit. If you gonna do porn, do porn. <laughs> like you wasn't like you ain't you ain't even turn out to be nobody. Jason Thaisum, Elon Musk, <laughs> Elon. <laughs> Yo, Bobby. Huh? You know what's bad when Hess is like the voice of reason. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to move on. <laughs> Uh, chocolate <laughs> chips ever. That's what like. <laughs> yeah, speaking of chocolate chips, yo, has you remember our fucking librarian? <laughs> remember Cookie? <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on, yo. All right, all right, man. I hate Eli that lady. Musk, I hate Eli that lady Musk with says, Huh? I hate that lady with passion. <laughs> she She's the only... Old- no, fuck her, because she was the only she was the only class I get not great good good grades in. She was the only class that's like if I was getting A's and B's, she won't be giving me like a C or some shit. She'd be the only class I get a C. Yeah. Then you can't no read, so what you expect from a librarian? It's for her to eat a dick. That's what I expect. <laughs> Man, give me a B, bitch. Give me a B, bitch. Uh, right. C is for cookie. <laughs> <laughs> cookie, Chris. Uh. <laughs> I lost my head. Goki crisp. <laughs> Stupid. <Ooh. laughs> All right, Elon Musk says uh, Tesla will replace humanoid robots. Will, will release humanoid robots next year. Fuck um, it, I man. suggest y'all get your gun license and load up like Will Smith and I Am Legend. Mm-hmm. It was an iRobot. Yeah. yeah. Both so we shooting shit. Mm. <laughs> Mad robots everywhere. We're gonna die. We shooting shit in the year. I, I want to give it to 2028 with these fucking robots go rogue. Like them, like he gonna he gonna put out the first model. The first models are gonna be obsolete, and then the new models are gonna take over the new mod, the old models, yep. and we're gonna have to shoot everything. Mm-hmm. Facts. Make sure you make sure you got some fucking liquor and guns with mad ammo. Facts. Um, Jason Statham cast in Beekeeper thriller movie. <laughs> The yeah, I don't know. What the, I don't know what that is. It's like an action know. beekeeper sort of movie. So it's, so it's the same bees Candyman <laughs> and this same uh, My Girl. Oh, fuck. <laughs> he can't <laughs> see. Uh, he can't see without his glasses. Can't see without his glasses. <laughs> so that's what y'all telling me though. This ain't this ain't Candyman uh, or fucking My Girl. Nah, it's, it's mm-hmm. Jason Statham gonna be beating people up with bees and shit. Yeah. I think I think I swear he a Pokemon friend. <laughs> he might be. B drill, go. <laughs> Yo, a bunch of B drills. <laughs> he gonna uh, kill a nigga like he can use bees like throwing stars. <laughs> <laughs> and a flat <flexor> shot. Oh, you can be like a bee whisperer or some shit like that. <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> That'd be funny if like all the bees come to him and then he grow to some extra big bee shit and then nobody can defeat him. Kill the bees. Always one of my bees. Yes. Like, the bee jutsu. <laughs> come my bee chairs. Yes. <laughs> um, Netflix re- renews Cobra Kai early for season five. I haven't yeah. watched season four. Oh, it's not out yet. It's not out yet. Yeah, it's not out. I haven't watched season three then. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they re- so they renewed it for season five before even four even came out. So Yeah, yeah I got I gotta finish season three. Oh, you got to. Miguel's an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, I like I like the writing in the movie because it it'll be like you'll be rooting be for the good guy. So cheesy. It because it makes fun of itself, but, it doesn't take itself that serious, which I kinda like. I needed to. I needed to do the first two seasons that it did, not this third one. I don't think you got to the part yet. Which one? You ain't no, get to the no, school no. fight yet, did you? 
Yeah, the school fight we broke his back. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was okay, the season so you two. Seen, seen the back yeah, that, that, that was season two finale. Okay, so you Because in that. season three, he was he was crippled. Yeah. yeah. Well, season two, he got out the hospital. He was just a dickhead. Because <laughs> well, his, his back ain't work, nigga. Me? Yeah, but I got to like, if there's like 12 episodes in the fucking season, I got to maybe like five. Mm. That so, don't work, nigga. So he's out the <laughs> hospital. Um, his his sensei, no, his Miguel's mom don't fuck with the sensei because yeah. you yeah. Like kid, you fucked up. Let his back get broke. <laughs> you were all right though, man. Come on, man. Let me let me say, let me taste that again. Sure. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you fucking kid. kid all right. He tough. <laughs> <laughs> No, the, the, I think the funny thing in that whole series was uh, when Johnny when Johnny was explaining <laughs> to Miguel why he don't like Daniel, and the way they was explaining it, it I could see his point. Fucking new kid come out, just steal my fucking girl. Fucking yeah. um, get on my goddamn dirt. Fuck out of here, man. I love her. <laughs> no, that's funny. Like that's um, I don't know if you if y'all ever um seen How I Met Your Mother before, mm-hmm. but um uh, um. Doogie Howser, his character, like loved that movie. Like in the in the show, he loved that movie, and he was like, but his favorite character was Zapka because he's like he's the good guy in the movie because he was like some dude just trying to take my girl, and then he did and then like start beating me up, and then like um, I forgot I think he like hit him with the hose or something. He did some something to him, but like from his perspective, it's like that nigga's just an asshole. Like, yeah, to my girl and shit, and I was trying, I'm trying to defend myself from some nigga just trying to take my girl. So I was like. <laughs> Some people like fuck with that view. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Eddie Murphy and Jonah Hill will become comedy's next big duo in Kenya Barris's Netflix comedy. Mm-hmm. Believe it. Um, a few questions, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. When is Eddie Murphy going back on the road? <laughs> he might be on the road right now. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's I mean, hard. He might, be, he might be trying shit out like local comedy clubs, something like that. Yeah. I don't know about actually. Like, I want, I want like a tour announced, like a Dave Chappelle tour, like announced. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is that more of a um? Hmm. Is that more of a challenge for Eddie Murphy or Jonah Hill? Oh, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy's comeback wasn't the best, but he's still Eddie Murphy. I want to believe at like his core, but Jonah Hill and Eddie Murphy, that's like Jonah Hill got to really step up to the plate. Is that, mm. is, is that more of a test for Eddie or Jonah? I think neither. I think so. Like if he comes, cause they're doing so obviously they're going to be doing something fresh. The coming to America thing was an issue because you're basing it off of, the original coming to America and it's 20 years later. Right. If he had just came in and just did a different movie and maybe it, we wouldn't have the same uh, reaction to what happened on screen, but just because it's tied to the original coming to America and people are more upset with that. But I would say it'd probably be more on Eddie just because Jonah's been active this whole time. So he's, you know, he had that going and Eddie hasn't been doing so much stuff. Right. So I'd put it more on Eddie. I mean, are you guys excited about an Eddie Murphy and Jonah Hill comedy? Written, okay, a Eddie Murphy and Jonah Hill comedy, but written by Kenya Barris. Are y'all excited about that? Well, I don't hate Kenya Barris like other people do, so I'm fine. I don't hate him. It's just he seems really hacky, like really like predictable. I, well, it, yeah, he seems like hacky, predictable, and like borderline corny. Yeah, so I, yeah. I guess I don't, I don't know, hate I don't, like, Yeah. So I don't so for me it's like eh, I've never really watched Blackish or Mixish. I gave I watched like an episode of that shit he had on Netflix, like if that and I was like I watched Grownish. Okay. I'm I haven't watched any of that shit, so I have no frame of reference for any of that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So to me it's just like, oh he's just some guy who does shit, but I don't <laughs> so I don't know enough of his work to like have a I guess negative or positive opinion on the work he does. Mm. I didn't the, the, the Netflix show was like, "Yeah, hey, this is whatever," but I never like finished it. So, I don't know. so that might be a, cool. So maybe that might be a, a implication of how I feel because like I like it enough to finish it. So I'm just going off of uh, because because he wrote Coming to America too. So yeah, like, I didn't love that either. Yeah, I didn't either. It was a lot of shit that was dated in there. It was like um, on fleek. I was like, "What the fuck, niggas don't say that no more." <laughs> but, all right. At all. <laughs> all right, all right, can you? <laughs> Didn't he have a show? 
He had a show, right? A couple of shows. Yeah, a couple of shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The show on Netflix, that's what I was talking about. The show that was him. Yeah, the uh, shit with um Rashida Jones. Yeah, yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah. I didn't like that. It was a little Well, maybe because of his acting. His acting is like really bad. It was like, yeah, you could have He's not an actor. Could ask yourself writer. out. <laughs> and you should have got somebody else to probably yeah. play him. Yeah. But it is what it yeah, is. Yeah, don't be Diddy. All in the videos. Acting. <laughs> I mean, Diddy was good in um Get Into the Greek. I liked him. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's funny. He was just an asshole. He was just complaining. Could, he was just being an asshole because so it was kind of funny. He was like, "I mind fuck you right now." <laughs> you see me fucking your mind? <laughs> you see me fucking your mind? Fucking your mind. Just funny. Get him to the degree. I am black. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jurassic Park star says he was quote unquote very bitter about the movie for years. Yeah, BD one. Henry Wong, Henry BD Wong, BD, BD, BD Wong, Wong, the Asian dude, BD Wong. the Asian guy who was, who was a scientist. Yeah, he was a scientist. I think in the book, oh okay, the character is um more of a major player in the books, and in the first film they kind of just have him in there, and then he never comes back up. They, yeah, because he, uh, he made it to the cop. Yeah, the they boats, even show him how he, they even show him how he escaped the island. I don't think yeah. they just got rid of him. And so he was like a little bitter, like, oh, his character kind of got short shift. And then he didn't really get a fair shake until they did the reboot stuff later on. That his character came back. And had uh, more shut up. <laughs> well, you can feel that way if you want. You feel that way, but I, I mean, if Glenn don't feel that way, I don't want to hear shit from nobody. Glenn, Glenn could have been on fucking Walking Dead for at least another two seasons before Negan came. <clears throat> no. I, I mean, mean what's, in, in the what? comic books, that's how it goes, though. No, I mean it, it. It that's how it goes. But they could have at least stretched the story out where he could have been on there at least. Because like the part where Negan comes, they kind of like hurried that along. Like Negan, like if you want to follow the books, like the comic books chronologically and what mm-hmm. happened, Negan don't come along for a while, and you could have had fucking uh Glenn there for like at least another two seasons, and they just said, hey, we need like everybody talking about when the fuck is Negan come. They just had to put that in there, and it was like, ah, right, y'all know when Negan come, Glenn die, right? Yeah. Then Glenn had to get the short end of the stick. So if Glenn, don't, I, don't, I mean, I, I guess you can. Okay, cool. Glenn had to go, nigga. He had to go. He had, he had to have the eye pop out. Yeah, Glenn Glenn, Glenn Ross, nigga. <laughs> um, Lion King prequel cast Young Mufasa and Scar James Earl Jones not returning, which is expected for me, I guess. Mm-hmm. Why would James Earl Jones be playing like a young Mufasa? Yeah, this is actually yeah, what I wanted yeah. from like the, um, the first movie. Who is playing um, Young Mufasa? Young Mufasa? Mufasa, 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 Mufasa. Is it, is it Yaya Abdul Mateen? Nah, it's him. <laughs> <laughs> the second? Uh, Ain't he African? Is it? Yaya? I mean, it's not African, mm. but that might just be racist. Mm-mm. I, you right. I'm sorry. I no, might I'm just, just fucking listen, Muslim I, or something. I agree with you. I just don't know better enough. I mean, I would like Yaya Abdul Mateen. I mean, he's popular right now, so I don't see yeah. why not. I think he's getting buff yeah, I mean, for fucking um, uh, what is it, Aquaman too? Aquaman? Oh, he, he's back for that. Yeah, he. You ain't see the pictures? And he got mad buff. He's like, yeah, I'm ready. Nah, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Mitch, are you are you going to see Candyman? Am I? I mean, do y'all want to watch Candyman? I mean, I, I think we kind of have to. I mean, I'll watch it. I feel like we have to because that's our only black, mm-hmm. like, villain horror guy. Yeah, I watch it. I wasn't planning on it, but I watched it. And now because okay. I was too scared, it just wasn't something I was planning on watching. Have y'all ever said Candyman in the mirror? No, yeah, I'm not younger. Yeah, I, I've never done it. Nah, I just, <laughs> listen, sometimes like, it's one know. of the things I know I'm not real, but I don't want to test. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Still, same thing with Bloody Mary. It's just like, you know, it's, yeah, it's, listen, it's, it's fine. Anything. Listen, sometimes it's okay to just not do shit. <laughs> yeah, some things, you know, white men draw up and I'm like, you know what? I don't know this white man's intentions. Maybe he could be trying to get us. I don't know. I, I don't know what the fuck I'm unlocking with these uh, words in unison in pattern. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to just mind my own black ass business and then do what I do. Azareth, Metrion, Zenthos. I don't know what that does. Fucking black hole could open somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> uh, John Cena understands why Dave Bautista doesn't want to work with him. <laughs> and why is that? Because he doesn't want to be associated with any wrestlers. Like it, Dave, Dave Bautista is taking this a lot serious than 
I'd say even The Rock. Like, he really wants to be, like, on some thespian shit. Actor. <laughs> yeah, like, he really wants I'm, to be I that. mean, but I guess Dave Batista doesn't have the resume that The Rock has, because at this point, Dave Batista... So, when... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's on his way there, but when Dave Bautista stopped wrestling and got into movies, as, as of right now, Dave Bautista's in maybe what six nah, movies? Been, from what I know of, you know, he's been he's been a lot more than that, I think, actually. A lot more he's movies. A, he's been in a couple of movies, like he, mainstream, I mean, not, like straight to DVD. Well, no, he, he's been in some in between. I mean, you got you got what blockbusters, Guardians, you got Avengers, you got. Netflix movies, you got maybe some not so popular movies. Yeah, I mean, the Rock, the, Rock, the Rock did a Tooth Fairy movie. He did mad That's movies not... before he got to where he's at now. I guess he can be a, a, associated with John Cena and not take a hit. Oh, I forgot he was Inspector, that 007 movie. Yeah, so he's a, uh, he's a bunch of shit. He was mad shit. Yeah, some, D, some, some straight to DVD shit, Final Score. He, he was in Blade Four Runner, King. Escape yeah. Plan. Blade Runner? Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna be in Doom. He's gonna be in the Iron. That um... he's in Thor, Love and Thunder. Wait, ain't oh, the Rock shit. in Doom? Oh no, Dune. Dune. D-U-N-E. Dune. Not, oh, not Dune. Dune. No, not that. Not that shit. Dune is some new shit that's coming out that everybody's making a rave about. Off the books. That's supposed to be good though. I don't know when it's coming out, but yeah. Don't year. Doom guys in Day and Moon Knight in it. Yeah. Yeah. So when that's supposed to come out? I thought it's supposed to come out this year. It's supposed to, but you know, Corona, nigga. Yeah. It's, it still says 2021. Yeah, I think it's, 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 it's supposed to be out know. this month, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's supposed to come out soon, but we'll see what happens. With yeah, Dave nah, got some I thought, movies, I thought that shit's supposed to come out in August. Yeah, he's been in a couple. My, my, my point being is he's been, st- most of them straight to DVD shit, though. Yeah, or yeah. just not. They're not Guardians of the Galaxy level. Type yeah, of shit, nah, nah, nah. But he's been he's been in some shit. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, listen, yeah, but he, he take crowd serious, like yeah, he's taking it. it, it it's 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 just funny because uh, it's just how everything comes to full circle. Like everybody, every wrestler that wants to be an actor goes to the Rock, and he gives them the advice, and then he just fucking take yeah. the fuck off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like, hey man, take the shit serious, and then you'll be serious. <laughs> yeah, it's just serious. Work out, get buff. <laughs> get mad diesel for no reason. But yeah, I do. I do see Dave. Batista taking roles that are different than John Cena and The Rock. Yeah. They're I mean, more serious and like character driven. He doesn't want to get he doesn't want to get lumped in. He as the action star, just, the big buff like or, macho yeah, shit. Just He's the buff nigga. Yeah, yeah. He, I think he wants to just be like an actor. He doesn't want to be. Just I mean, he's not gonna get unbuff. Yeah, no, but he can do other. But he can do films where that's not the main focus of the character. No, yeah. you can't be that buff. Look at my muscles. Fucking drama. <laughs> Well, he, he just, he, I guess he's not just trying to do the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger route. You know, like yeah. the big buff, like, like oh, let's do the, the pacifier or some shit that fucking Vin Diesel was doing. <laughs> he's just not trying to be another niggas that Tyler's looking for. Yeah. Yo, have you ever watched that movie with Dave Bautista and like the little girl where uh, I guess he was like a secret agent and she was like in school or some shit? <laughs> That's just like the pacifier. No. I, I know what you're talking about, though. The, the, the chick was talking shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. I forgot no, the name of the movie. I, I remember. i that might be his tooth fairy. Yeah, they all, they all gotta go through that. Hope that that's a hopefully like fucking Arnold that. Schwarzenegger. What was that shit with the kids? And he's like, stop, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him to shut up and shit. The oh, kindergarten teeth? cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah kindergarten cop. Fine, that's man. crazy. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mad at Batista. Yo, I kind of like him as an actor. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty cool. Um, gaming news. Uh, Xbox Series X and S and Xbox One getting cloud gaming this holiday. Mm-hmm. How do we feel about that? Is that free? Oh yeah, I think so. yeah. Yeah, yeah if you, you got sure? Game Pass, well, mm-hmm. yeah, Game Pass, you got that. Look, 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 look. Hmm? Nothing. Game Pass. You, you got the Game Pass. <laughs> it's free. It's free. Them. Everything's free if you want. Because you need Game Pass Ultimate. Is what they're saying. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah, I already got that. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, for you. <laughs> well, you you got it too, right? Yeah, but okay. I mean, I'm talking about the niggas that don't. Well, get it. I think it's worth it at this point. You get enough shit. You get no, mad shit. Way more than worth yeah. It. You get um. What, what what is what is coming out? Um. Shit. Hey, they might have fucking Halo up there. No, ain't no might. I'm pretty sure. It's <laughs> ain't no might. Yeah. I think anything. Yeah. I, I think they've 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 been made the statement where they're saying I think most of the anything they own first party is going on 
Game Pass day and day. I'm like 98% certain. Yeah, did we uh, good then? Yeah. Mm. yeah. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Ratchet and Clank rifts a Rift Apart's riffs could have easily been done on PS3, says Traveler Tales Game Founder. Yeah. That nigga hate him. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I just sound like I hate that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I could have done that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, when did uh, the first Ratchet, well, not the first Ratchet and Clank, but when did the uh, new gen Ratchet and Clank come out? Like PS3, PS4? No, that, that, that was a PS4. That not like the one before Rift Apart was PS4. I know it was one right? for. Oh yeah, they have one on PS4. Yeah, yeah. it just came out like yeah. three years ago, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and and if you got PlayStation Plus, I think you could. Down- oh, I I don't know if you can still now, but you could have downloaded that free. Oh, um, yeah, that's, that's that's definitely hate. Yeah, he's saying that uh, you don't need the uh, PF- PS PS5's SSD to achieve the roof mechanic, which I'm not really that in tune with it, but I think that shit would be. Yeah. In order to do that, it would be have to be some serious fucking loading time that, that <laughs> or some yeah. shit. I'm pretty sure you could do it, but it would be a fucking drawback if you do. Yeah, but I think yeah, I'm sure. So I'll, yeah, he might be right on a technical standpoint. You could probably achieve that effect on that older technology, but I think with the solid state drive, it makes it so it makes it so that it loads so fast and there's no lag, there's no issues, and you can do that. Plus, plus I think graphically the rest of the game looks immaculate too. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have a PS5 and I haven't played the games. So I don't really know that for a fact. But I believe that's some of the things that some people were saying. So I think you add all that together and it's like, nah, we need that solid state nigga. I, I kind of understand what the Traveler Tale dude is talking about, but the way they described it, how they did it, it's not like the world that they're jumping into. It's not the same world. It's a completely different world. If it's a That's completely it's different shit. Yeah, time. it's yeah. generated in somewhere else. It's not like the same and shit. Like seems, you just, yeah. like let's say if you made the stage right and it's parallel, and then all right, the, the riff is right here. Here's the next level. Yep. That's not how they yep. did it. It's, it's literally like cut, cut like that, and that's how they do it. So yeah, I mean, you could have done it, but it wouldn't have been the same. Yeah, and it's like seamless. So yeah. like you're loading up two game stages at the same time, and you're, like, you're jumping in between all them shits without lag, without loading time, all that shit. So you know, yeah, stop eating. <laughs> um dr disrespect says he's suing twitch over ban yeah yeah um i don't know how that's gonna go though it i mean unless he has legitimate evidence over why he was banned and it's not the sexual allegations that we have heard if, if it's something that you know is just it could be a, a, a money thing and like the sexual allegations could be a rumor. We don't know. But for him to sue, it has to hold some weight where he knows like y'all niggas did some bullshit. Yeah, in the article it says, I guess he's streaming on YouTube or wherever he's streaming now. He was saying that he's going to sue him and I guess he he knows what he was banned for. Obviously he didn't probably, he did not get go into detail because obviously he's going to have a lawsuit so he's not going to go into details about what it is but um, I'm guessing at least from him stance it was, it was bullshit and it's probably not necessarily what people were thinking it was over so I, he must have some type of grounds for something and yeah. he's going to sue them like he wouldn't be like oh no I fucked up I'm still going to sue I mean some people would but I don't think he's going to he might really have a case or at least his version of a case whether he wins or not something different but I'm assuming must have been some bullshit bullshit he's like that <laughs> of all time shit mm-hmm Mm. Uh, Nickelodeon's All Star Brawl adds April O'Neil and Cat Dog. Mm-hmm. Skip. Uh, you said what? I said you skip. Yeah, you skip the topic. Oh, what I do? Oh, mm-hmm. Twitch streamers are boycotting the site for a day to protest hate raids. Mm. Bullshit. That's a thing. This is yeah, stupid. It's been a problem. People have been is... raiding people and slurring them out and all that shit. This is this is. Unaffective and fucking stupid. Sucks. Right when I make affiliate, now I got a boycott. <laughs> right. <laughs> Congrats. Uh, <laughs> but this is stupid because so so for everyone not on Twitch or know what the fucking hate rate is. So right, it's it's one king loser, right? King. So it's so it's a loser who happens to want to make content, right? And then he gets online and he forms a community with other loser niggas that he that assume that they're like him. 
So then he builds this big ass community of like loser minions, right? <laughs> and then one day the king loser, like loser leader, says, Hey, you know what we can do? Cause we're assholes and losers in real life. We're gonna go make someone else feel bad. We're gonna go make them feel bad because they have less followers or because they're black, they're women, they're gay, they're trans, whatever the fuck. We're gonna raid them with either I think it's from like a thousand followers to like fifteen hundred. I've seen like at, at the most, and we're gonna go raid them with slurs. So send them over there. All right, ah, oh, you fat, you gay, you trans, you nigger, <laughs> spick, you chink, you fucking bitch, get in the kitchen, yada yada, blah blah blah, all that shit. Right? They do all yeah. that shit, and then uh, I guess the people getting the raid, like, oh, they're thankful for the raid, but then when the messages, when the spam messages come, obviously mm-hmm. it fucks up the day because a lot of people just can't take that kind of, like, onslaught of shit. And I, I think it's admirable that they're doing this, but it's also kind of dumb because it doesn't really affect anything. Well, because, what? No, I was going to say they're doing it because Twitch hasn't done anything to stop the stuff from happening. So it's less about that it's happening and that Twitch I understand that like setting up protections so that it doesn't happen or that there's no or there's seeming to be no repercussions for it to ha- happening. So they're like, well, I mean, you're not like doing anything to protect us. You're not doing anything to like make it so, OK, this happened and then we get to have a process to ban this person so they can't do that again. So mm. like it's just happens. Keep happening. I, I saw somebody. Uh, just today they had retweeted something Twitch had tweeted on like the 11th of Twitch saying, oh, we see that this happened, blah, 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 blah. And then and I think he was like, today, he's like, I got um, he, um, rated three times today. <laughs> like So like, you're not yeah. doing anything. So like, you're saying that you recognize there's an issue, but you haven't done anything to like protect us from this issue. So I understand the so it's like, okay, well, if you're not going to protect us, we're going to not use your shit. And I mean, obviously, it's, it's a one day boycott thing. It's just to show the power. Like, because the power, it's the same thing with OnlyFans, how they backpedaled on getting rid of the porn. It's like, well, we need them hoes. And it's like, <laughs> we, if you get rid of all the creators, well, we need them hoes too. So it's like, <sighs> now, nah, my- they show a, for- show a force, like, oh, look, you're not helping us. We'll just leave and go somewhere else. You're, without us, you got nothing. Yeah, so, but my thing is, like, the people that, are participating in the day off of Twitch, the quarter, the, the hashtag day off of Twitch, right? Mm-hmm. The doing it one day doesn't really affect anything. That I don't, I, eh, I, I, I kind of want. Hmm? No, I'm sorry, I, I, I kind of want to compare it to like George Floyd, but like, hear me out, right? So, mm-hmm. say, that. say if like what happens happens with George Floyd and niggas protest for a day. What is a day really doing? Like, are you are you really expecting effective change for you protesting, getting out there, using your voice, using your platform for a day, and then going back to like, oh, that's that day didn't that day did nothing. We're just going back to a regular schedule program. And like, I feel like with them getting off of Twitch for a day doesn't really do anything because what's gonna happen is, well, what's 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 happening is the people that are gonna be off Twitch for a day, they probably weren't gonna stream that day anyway. They're not losing any revenue. They're not losing any subscribers. They're not like losing anything. So it's like, if you take that day off of Twitch, you're only gonna stream some other day that week and you know what's gonna happen. They're gonna get all those subscribers that they probably missed that day off of Twitch. They're gonna get that same payout the next day. And I feel like what people are doing doesn't really matter at this point. And like, if you wanted to make effective change, if you're really worried about hate raids and your friends getting hate rated or, or like lesser creators or creators of color, creators of this background or whatever are getting like discriminated against, you want to make a stand like, hey, we'll leave Twitch for a week. We'll leave Twitch for a month. We'll just flat out leave Twitch and go somewhere else. But, but you know why these people really don't give a fuck? It's because like that affects their bottom dollar. They're not going to they have all the eggs in one basket, I feel. And they're not gonna completely boycott Twitch because if 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 you really gave a fuck about this, you would just leave Twitch. It's like, yo, my friends, the creators that ha- that have you know whatever reason they're being hate rated, be it you know they had they don't have as many followers, they're black, 
you know, overweight, this, whatever, with they identify with this, whatever. You would just leave Twitch and go somewhere else. You're not really affecting Twitch's bottom dollar by leaving for a day. I say I, yes. I say yes and no. So here's the thing. There's no one saying that they won't necessarily completely boycott Twitch, but I think maybe this is the, and also I do think there's bigger creators who are doing it. So it's not just the smaller creators. And it's maybe, no, I'm not saying that, but it's just like they're not going to leave permanently. It's just okay. So if you're saying you day off of Twitch, a whole 20, 24 hours off of Twitch, that's cool yeah. because what's going to happen is you're going to stream. So say if like Tim the Tatman, Pokemane, uh, Ludwig, all them niggas say, Hey, I'm not streaming this day, and they go stream the next day. Hey, yeah. I, I stood in solidarity with y'all, I'm part of the movement. Yay me. I'm a big creator and I stood with y'all. And they just get all that shit that they missed on Wednesday, on what, Thursday or Friday. What if that's just a start? My thing is, what if that's just a start? What if they just do the day? Because I think it's less about what's going to do to the bottom line and just to show Twitch maybe. Like, hey, look, we're kind of serious. We're not going to use your thing. Because then once because Twi- it's less about them losing money, more about Twitch losing money. Because once Twitch stops, starts losing money, they're not going to care. But they're losing money for a day. For the start. And, but, and then what if, and then because I mean obviously I know I understand what you're saying. I'm not yeah. disagreeing with what you're saying. What I'm what I'm saying is maybe it starts with a day. And then if they do the day and then nothing significant happens for that, then maybe they're like, we'll do a week. And if, and then uh, we'll do two weeks, we'll do three, or maybe we'll just leave Twitch all together. Like they're not gonna I think, do it. Well, I can't say yes or no one way because I don't know. But no, I, I can Okay, so ha- I, I don't I don't know if you really like dive into like the analytics of niggas, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if you know, but like I'm I'm pretty sure you've seen like either somebody on Twitch try to like promote their YouTube channel or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And then you go over and check the YouTube, and it's just not as many subscribers as it is on like their other channel, right? So, oh, like, yeah, it's like it's like one percent. So it's you know, so it's kind of hard to move niggas from one platform to another, right? So if mm-hmm. someone says, "Hey, I'm quitting Twitch. I'm moving over here," yeah. If they if they were having to do that, they would lose. If the article I said is correct, they will lose sixty to eighty five percent of their revenue, right? And if if people make this their like full time thing, if, if this is their full time gig, you're not gonna you're not gonna compromise your revenue for a year, year and a half, two years for you to gain another audience, all because you want to stay in solidarity with a couple motherfuckers that's getting hate rated every now and then. But the thing is, if enough people do it, then Twitch will have no choice but to fix their issue, and then they'll come back. Um, and you're right, but uh, and you're also right, right about that money thing because um, in terms of that uh, Dr. Disrespect thing, in the article he's talking about how, because I guess now he only streams predominantly on um, YouTube, YouTube or whatever the hell, he makes, like a qu- he makes like a quarter of his profit that he's making while he's on Twitch, which is part of the reason why he's suing. Exactly. He's yeah. loss of profits. Yeah, so, um, so I don't disagree with that. I just think, what else? I mean, they got to start somewhere, and this is a thing to do, and I don't know if I agree with it. I don't even know if it's the right idea, but I understand why they're doing it. I'm not mad at them, but you're right. It might just be like, oh, yeah, we did it, and then they go back on it today, and then nothing ever happens. And, you, and yeah, I'm, Then I'm, usually that's generally what happens, but I can, I guess, appreciate the idea of effort, I guess. Yeah, I did, like I said, I didn't want to try to relate it to George, George Floyd or shit like no, that. No, like, you're absolutely right. You know, but it's like if you on? if you do marchings and like you know we 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 riot and we protest and we do all this shit over days and weeks and months and like half a year and like eight months out of a year, ten months out of a year, then we start to see effective change. So they started changing shit in Minnesota. They, they started changing shit all across the country. They pull up certain regulations and you know just certain things to like ensure that this what happened in minnesota or minneapolis doesn't happen where where we're at yeah. but i don't know what a day off of twitch i mean you you, you could be right when niggas be like yo we're doing a day right now if they keep doing this shit two months from now we're doing a week off then mm-hmm. if they don't stop that shit then we're doing like a month off and then we fucking leave and we go into <laughs> facebook youtube we'll find somewhere else to go yeah. but i don't know if niggas give a fuck about that like that, because they, they don't give a fuck about it unless it happens to them. Mm-hmm. Like, unless it's happening to them. Nobody gives a fuck about anything, really, unless mm-hmm. it directly affects them. 
That's all true. these like natural disasters that happen in other countries, you know, third world countries, it's fucked up the loss of life. But if I'm not affected, I don't really care. It's that old Patrice O'Neill joke. It's like, yo, such and such people died in a plane crash. Like, ah, uh, ah, uh, trying to give a fuck, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't. <laughs> I'm good. I'm alive. I'm well. I'm on the ground. Yeah. I really don't give a fuck. I got some. Subs- I got subscribers. I'm streaming. I'm making thirty thousand a month. I'm making this much a month. I'm able to live off of just talking to y'all on the camera. I'm good. Yeah. Y'all little y'all little niggas. I stand in solidarity with y'all because we gamers. We supposed to be brothers and sisters or whatever. I really don't give a fuck. I'm not leaving Twitch. It's, you might be right. It's got to be somebody who. Who has a name for themselves? Like if somebody like Ninja like was Ninja. to do some yeah. shit like that, then it would make a it would make a wave. It's kind of like it's kind of like the shit when um you know it was this thing where the people who are behind Star Wars was uh, attacking the fans, and mm-hmm. like people on YouTube were making were making uh, videos and stuff about it. Was saying like, yo like look at these look at these creators of look look who um, Lucasfilm got working for them. They they talking mad shit about the fans. But then it didn't get big until they fucked with this dude named uh, Star Wars Theory. Like mm-hmm. when the Mandalorian season two, like the finale happened, like he did a reaction video and he was crying. And one of the dudes who was involved with Lucasfilm, he kind <laughs> he kind of reposted him making fun of him. And then now it started getting like headway because like he's the bigger name when it comes to like basically Star Wars content on YouTube. So then mm-hmm. that's when it started getting less because somebody who actually has the following got hit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know, man. Well, I guess we'll see in, in, in the months to come. Yeah, I guess only 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 time will tell at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where we at? Uh, Nickelodeon's All Star Brawl as April O'Neil and Cat Dog. Nigga, I was there for Michelangelo. <laughs> like, off, I was there. I was there. <laughs> like, Nickelodeon is like my childhood. I feel like, you know, Doug, yeah, Rugrats, Brenda Stempy, you know, later on, like 99, they, ordered, they added Cat Dog and SpongeBob and Patrick and all the niggas. Yeah. I mean, April O'Neil was a plus. I mean, like, that That wasn't even like, if, if y'all had not added her, I'd have been, I'd have still been on board. But, mm-hmm. you know, y'all just want to give me that cool. I wonder who else they put. Nah, they gonna put mad niggas up here. They put mad niggas. And they gonna... Yo, do they have Invader Zim in there? Yeah, I think they got Zim. Yeah. yeah, nigga, what? I'm, I am in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in there. <laughs> um, this is this is wild. Uh, Fortnite as Will Smith's bad boys character, Mike Lowry. Mike Lowry. <laughs> Mike Lowry. <laughs> <laughs> this shit was random. Look, random. I mean, it. it I mean, they got mad random stuff. It, because if you talk about niggas with guns, yeah, he's one of them niggas with guns. <laughs> but I mean, they got Captain America in there. They got Kelsey in there. They got fucking mad. They got mad just random shit in there too. Did they have they Terminator in there yet? I, I yeah, think he was in there. Once, yeah, I feel like. Yeah, they had they just, just niggas with shield. guns. Yeah, it's not even just niggas with guns though, because they put Captain America. He's a shield, but it's just like uh, yeah. Um, no, but Captain America think, used a gun at one point. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they got they have Superman in there. Hmm. Yeah, like yeah, they, just, they just get characters. Yeah, they just get characters and they put them in there because it's just a skin. You know what I mean? It's not like it's yeah, like in there. Now. Yeah, it's it's but but that's that's a wild random ass skin though. <laughs> no, I mean, listen, it can't be more random than for Martin Luther. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, who's I who? mean, okay, so why they put Will and not Martin? I don't know. He he next. They gotta do and also. Nah, you gotta do the tandem, dog. Next. You can't get one and not the other. Beyond it, also. <laughs> Also, you know, I don't know. Will Smith, the bigger star. So I'm, you. I'm just waiting for yo, John McClane. Show, yo, Martin or Fresh Prince, yo. We've huh? had what, this what, conversation before. What was better, Martin, uh, Martin or Fresh Prince? Yes, I would say Martin's uh, funnier. The better, the better black sitcom. Oh, Martin. What is the better black sitcom? Martin. It's probably. I, I laugh more for Martin. That makes sense. Bro, man, fifth floor. <laughs> Oh no, that's a that's a debate. That's that's like fucking Jay Z and Nas at this point. That's like <laughs> Martin and Fresh Prince, though. Well, that's less of a debate for me. Well, Jay Z and Nas. Yeah, for me personal, just because personal preference, of music taste. Well, what is your preference? I I like Jay Z better than I like Nas. I'm not saying he's better. Hey. I just like 
to listen to Jay Z's music more than I like to listen to Nas. That's not saying Nas is bad. That's not saying Nas is garbage. I'm just telling you my personal preference <laughs> on who I Because I know once you say that, people get all up in arms. <laughs> like, like, oh, nigga, are you like Nas? Are you like Jay? No, I, I just. I just prefer to listen to Jay Z's music more than I do not. Well, if you like Jay Z, that means you like big over Pac, nigga. Um, that's also I right. do. <laughs> nah, usually, like that's, that's, that's been a thing for a right, while. Usually, too. if you pick Jay Z over Nas, you like big over Pac, and like vice versa. And you I, like that makes sense. Over I do like Pac over Big, and I do. Mm. Like that's I don't, I don't know what it is. That's just how that's just how it go. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> um, Fortnite is getting a Martin Luther King experience. I had a dream. Uh, I had a beam. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, without reading the article, I know that Martin Luther King is not going to be a skin. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, it's I'm guessing. Like it's, yeah, I'm guessing it's just like an educational thing. Yeah. <laughs> Marching yeah. time. Because yes. It's, it's it's no way in hell that they would pick a man because it would be tone deaf, blasphemous, disrespectful, oh, you and know what? what? Never even crossed my mind. Mm-hmm. What? I know I know what you're gonna say now, but it never even crossed my mind. Fam, it would be yeah. every every like word you <laughs> could think of that's like derogatory. <laughs> Mm-hmm. For a man to be a skin running around in a fucking suit with monotones, like black and white skin, because that's the only way we see Martin Luther, basically. Yeah. It's like running around with a skin shooting niggas. And getting shot, because that's mm-hmm. how he died. Yeah. I have a big beam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's just like a museum experience. It's kind of like how in some of the Assassin's Creed games, because they spend so much time recreating the... um. The his historical periods they go to, they kind of use them as like museum pieces, like without the gameplay. It's like it's like some type of mode that you can activate. Yeah. And you can just like go through and like see how things look because they take so much time to like accurately depict things. So I think it's just a museum type of thing. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Round this thing will tear through any Fortnite skin. I have a beam. <laughs> <That's not good. laughs> oh, you come at the king, you best not miss. This AK, I'm okay. Uh, this AK will spray any with your way on any given Sunday. I have a beam. <laughs> they got Jesse Jackson in that shit. Yo. <laughs> oh, this chopper will hit any hypocrite, blood or cripple, any chump that runs his lip. I have a beam. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> One day, little black boys and little black girls would join hands with little white boys and little white girls on the top of any fortress and scream "GGs." <laughs> Lord, I have a theme. Uh, you know why they hate us? They hate us because they, <laughs> they hate us. Y'all hate us because y'all hate us. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> One day, all of God's children, <laughs> black and white men, Jews and Gentiles, <laughs> will be able to sing that old Negro spiritual season pass, season pass. Play a game Thank without lag, a game almighty. without lag. God damn. Thank God oh Almighty. <laughs> I have a season pass. <laughs> a season pass. <laughs> We're gonna take the type, some type of some uh, some, some type of hell. Mm. <laughs> Lord, I have a beam. <laughs> a beam. Can you make it a shirt? I have a I beam. Have a beam. <laughs> <laughs> With Martin's face on it. I don't know. Is that too much? Oh, too much. Man. That might be too much. I take it. <laughs> now nah, you know what? If we had a bigger audience, that would be like a show. Like you can only know that what that shit means if you listen to the show. <laughs> yeah. I have, have a beam. beam. <laughs> you can have. And then you can have Martin on the back, but it's it's the it's the Malcolm X picture when he's looking through the window. And you make it, <laughs> Mar- and then you make it Martin. <laughs> oh man! I have a beam. <laughs> I have a beam. <laughs> oh, you come at the king, you best not miss. <laughs> yeah, that works so perfect. <laughs> <sighs> hey man. 
I get drunk more often. This is fun. <laughs> 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 uh, oh shit. This nigga. Uh, Off the top, nigga. Uh, <laughs> Gamescon okay. 2021 opening night. <laughs> I, um, I didn't see it. You didn't see, see none of the trailers? None of it? Mm, I think I, I think I saw a little bit of that uh Saints Row shit. Because it was only it was only like 10 seconds. And oh, nigga. The, the the gameplay. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, the gameplay. Yeah, the whole trailer was like a fucking three whole, minutes. Yeah, that's like three minutes long, nigga. Mm-hmm. But the, you know, but the gameplay was like thirty seconds, and then I think that's it. Uh, they yeah, have yeah. Marvel's they Midnight have Suns. Work. Yeah, Marvel yeah, Midnight that. Suns. Is it Midnight Suns or Marvel Suns? Midnight Suns. Midnight Suns. Midnight Suns. Okay. Mm-hmm. I saw. I like. I know that it's like an XCOM game, but with Marvel characters. Yeah. Yeah. So I know. I know about that, but. And I know they have a Halo's release date, which is yes. like December December eighth or some shit. Uh huh. But I didn't like break the go, download, nigga. Mm. Yeah, go too crazy on it. Calling out of work, nigga. No, probably not. Nigga. Shit, no. I'm an adult. I'm, a, I'm an adult. I'm gonna play when I get home, nigga. Fuck that shit. You gonna be too tired when you get home. You got. Ooh, I am gonna be too tired to go. To worry about, nigga. You gonna be too tired. I'm sorry. What happened? Nothing, man. Um, Bobby, what else they release? Uh, well. They said Horizon Horizon, Horizon uh, Forbidden West is delayed until like 2022. Uh, uh, they 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 showed <laughs> they showed uh <laughs> they showed a extended look at uh Call of Duty Vanguard. People aren't really fucking with it. They're kind of done with that shit. Oh, Call of Duty. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. done with that shit. I'm, I'm it's the same it. shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what There's else? another got Warzone. They don't really need to do like the week, but I mean I'm sure they're still doing, but. They don't need to release the yearly games anymore because they got wars on now. I have a beam. <laughs> <laughs> Unless Martin Luther show up. <laughs> they got um Death Stranding director's cut. Yeah. They got a jetpack in it. <laughs> yeah, I think they did a lot of quality of life shit to like make the game maybe a little better. And this would probably be the version of the game to play versus the original version that came out. Of course they have a fucking jetpack. What a what is life without jetpacks? <laughs> Life. Yeah, like, uh it's not staying in Dreas though. <laughs> yeah, most of the time, most most of the thing it was just uh s- stuff that got release days like Sifu. Uh that yeah. comes out February. February. Yo, it's, I'm gonna be broke. broke <laughs> Fucking yeah, February. Got God damn. Uh broke, 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 five broke. <laughs> we ain't got it. Broke. Broke, broke, five broke. We ain't got it. <laughs> And um, that was most of the stuff that I was just interested in. Like everything else is just random games that I probably never play. You ain't gonna play that? Uh, what? I forgot what they announced. I forgot. Only only thing I really cared about was uh the Ninja Turtle game where they added April O'Neil mm-hmm. again, <laughs> <laughs> where they made her a fucking playable character in like the beat 'em up thing. I was like, oh okay. But then I think they're gonna add Casey Jones too. Okay, they, uh, as they should. That'd be cool. They kind of have to because, like, if you look at the picture that they dropped at the end of the trailer, that left side looked kind of empty, dog. I'm yeah. just saying, you got to drop like a Splinter or a Casey Jones or something like that, or Jimbo. <clears throat> oh, that'd be dope. Yeah. Yo, you just fucking Aladdin me. <laughs> Aladdin. Whole new world, nigga. <laughs> Whole new. <laughs> I ain't even I ain't even think about my boy your Jimbo. Yeah. April in your Jimbo? <laughs> what? I gotta ask Kevin Eastman about that when I talk to him. <laughs> Wait, well, he goes spaz on you. I don't get shit from this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, got nothing to do with me. <laughs> um Eternals official trailer. Yeah, now they show something with this. Do we feel better about the movie now? Yes. A little bit. I'm not gonna lie. This one, this one. Did a little bit. I'm still wary. I'm not gonna act like I'm not gonna be like here. Uh, this you is not gonna doubt be the greatest the thing. People at Disney, <laughs> aka bo- Marvel, nigga. We all did. We watched that trailer and it's been recorded <laughs> on YouTube. Now, <laughs> yeah, we, we doubt it. Man. Yeah, we was like, <laughs> yeah. So, so don't just try to back me in the corner, nigga. Yes, <laughs> I'm just saying, niggas doubt Yo, it. It's Marvel better. Marvel is Tom Brady. I will never doubt them niggas again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you right here. They're in the Buccaneers right now. You right. You got that. Never doubt them niggas again. Facts. Um, so yeah, but now this does look better. Yeah. We get we get a little bit more. We understand we get 
and I'm glad they're uh, asking and probably going to answer questions about, hey, man, if y'all been here this long, why the fuck you ain't help? <laughs> it's like, oh, we're crazy. We was, we, was told, <laughs> yeah. we was told not to. And then obviously we don't know what the what's exactly happening. I saw a few things where obviously I think most people's theories is this is going to be what leads into mutants. Yeah. Or, um, and um, does that? I think one of the other things was it could also maybe lead into Galactus to some some extent. Um, and then they're saying that maybe one of the things was like the celestial inside the core of the Earth, and that's what the event they have seven days to stop is from it emerging. So mm. I think that's how they're born. Like they like basically impregnate planets, and then when they <laughs> come through and like destroys the whole planet, like and shit. And they're born out of planets and shit. So that's oh yeah, you're right. Thing. Ego. Oh, thing ego. Yeah. So we'll see what happens, but I, it does look better. I um, still don't know what the fuck's happening though, but <laughs> I was like, this this is more intriguing. Got to see some of the action a little bit. So that's where that critter came from. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody put his dick in it. <laughs> Grand Canyon. Big <laughs> dick. He Hulk smashed it. <laughs> Me. Itty bitty piece. You, you big, big piece. Uh. <laughs> oh, I promise we 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 gonna go sleep. So. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, maybe maybe Bobby was right. We're gonna be done by now. Yeah. Um, maybe in a Spider-Man No Way Home teaser trailer. Yo. Yeah. Uh, nigga. Yeah. When the movie yeah. comes out mm. and I was right, mm. put that clip out of me. Whatever. Of what? Me I'm, I'm philosophizing everything, nigga. <laughs> put that clip out of me. <laughs> call me dumb because I know. Put that clip out again. I was mad right about everything. If them niggas show up in that shit, mm. yeah. I mean, so they so, got everybody from the everybody. So we got confirmation of of a version of Green Goblin. We don't know what, when, who, where, why. We just saw a pumpkin bomb. You didn't know the foes. Well, maybe. You hear the laugh? Time drop. Hop Goblin. She is a Hop Goblin. I know. I'm I'm assuming it is. Oh no, not Jane also, Frankel's. It's multi. It's multivert. But what if it was? Oh, no, he got sexual allegations. He's out of here. <laughs> or, or what if is this? This is their way of introducing the new person to play um, uh, Osborne, and it's somebody new. But because it's multiverse, they can introduce him that way. It's multiverse. They can mm-hmm. introduce, introduce him that way. That there's a way to do it like that. We'll see. Hmm. Um, you know, Jamie Fox is coming back, so Electro. Yeah. But it's not. Quite the same electro from yeah he ain't blue major Spider Man because he had the light he had the lightning yeah, yellow he ain't blue. and then they saw something that looked like it was either sand or whatever so it might be sand man mm-hmm. might be in there uh yeah obviously a dark Oct. and I feel like I'm missing somebody but it's wet fan I think mis- mm. you missed me oh Mysterio's that name yeah I think I think Mysterio's still alive you missing Probably. me <laughs> they don't have black people in, in movies. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> but, Jamie. <laughs> but yeah they're doing um the storyline that came i forgot what it's called off the top of my head now that came after civil war in the comic books because in the comic books in civil war spider-man um sided on iron man's side and in, mm-hmm. in doing that, he revealed his secret identity to the world, like on a press conference. Yeah, and then obviously that made a whole shit ton of problems for him. So he went to Doctor Strange to be like, "Hey, man, fix this." And yeah. then that's sort of the storyline they're going. Not make that clap. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's what happened. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people online and even in like the uh, comments on YouTube saying, "Why would Doctor Strange do this?" Is there a reason why Doctor Strange would do this? Because it seems like something so trivial where it was like, nigga, everybody know everybody secret identity. What the fuck does it matter? Like, why would Doctor Strange do this in your opinion? Peter's a kid. Oh, yeah. And the thing you're talking about, I think it's like, is it one moment in time? Some, There's something. something like that. that. Someone, but that had Mephisto like in it. Yeah. It, this is why people um, keep think, thinking that Doctor Strange is Mephisto for some fucking reason. Yeah. And there's also, well, there's a, I think there's a heavy crazy. Up. I yeah. saw one thing with some people saying that that's not even Doctor that's not even Doctor Strange, yeah, or that he's a scroll or whatever the hell it is, or he's being controlled by somebody else or whatever the hell it is. I, I didn't get the fucking you know what? Never mind. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm just telling you what theories. I guess it's theories. Right. Um, but I think maybe because he's a kid and because um, Iron Man is dead and Iron Man was his mentor. And I think maybe he's like, let me do something for this kid because obviously he's distraught. And I know he's just trying to help and he's a kid. Compared to everybody else who are adults who could deal with the consequences of their actions. More so than a teenager. Like, okay, so Isn't they getting in college now? They ain't graduate yet? <laughs> no, nigga's completely in high school, my nigga. Yeah. <laughs> he's like a sophomore. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. They got Tom Holland for years. And then and then he died for five years and came back and had oh, to go yeah. back to school. Damn. <laughs> Mr. Stark going to go. Exactly. He's like 16. <laughs> So Rest I mean, that with Bozeman. Facts. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there'll be a story. I'm sure there'll be like a story reason why I help him, and they'll probably be like, "I'll do it." Or right, we'll, they'll figure it out. Or maybe it's a whole surprise. Who knows? But multiverse, nigga. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess we'll see. Oh, oh shit. Um, so we're not watching Candyman, right? Hmm. I thought we was. Well, my mm, Saint Chi comes out. Next week, I believe. Oh, shit. That's why I said that. Yeah, so uh, Shang Chi takes precedence over uh, Candy the, Man. The Chin yeah. Man. Yeah, that's why I just thought about that because it comes out on Friday the third. Yeah. So I mean, so I mean, if y'all give a fuck about our review of Candy Man, let us know and we'll go ahead and watch it. But if y'all don't, we just gonna stick with the whole Marvel thing that we've been doing. Yep. Kung so, Fu Ken- let- <laughs> So let us know. Um, that's it for topics. Yeah, yeah, that's all things. So, we have an interview with the BlurCon founder himself to answer for all of BlurCon's discrepancies <laughs> and all of his happenings. Uh, we have Hilton George on the show. You know, it's a regular on the on the show. You know, he fuck with us kind of, sort of, but not really. He won't give me a job, but it's cool. <laughs> um, but we have him on the show. You can go ahead and check that interview right now. All right, so three ninjas podcast, Domino, Hess, Jones, Bobby. And uh, as many of you know, we didn't go to BlurCon this year. You know, we Ooh. wasn't with that vaccine shit. Yeah, but big, big boo. But you're not here yet, so <laughs> chill. <laughs> so, right, we didn't go to BlurCon. We, we wasn't with the vaccine shit. It's not that we're, you know, against vaccines. It's, you know, we ain't with the first wave of vaccines. But, you know, we plan on getting it. Um, from what it looks like with BlurCon, we missed one of the biggest blurred blowups in recent history. I'm kind of mad that we weren't there to witness it live. But we do have the man that got all the smoke for that blow up on the line right now, live and direct, we have the co-founder or founder of Blur Account. We have Hilton George. Hilton, how are you? Oh, I'm doing all right, brother. How y'all doing? All right. Good, yeah, man. Can't uh, complain. Uh, doing better than you, I want to assume. <laughs> I'm doing great. No, you're doing good. Doing right. yeah, you're doing yeah, good. I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. You got to look. You got to take the, take the hits with the, with the misses in life. That's how it works. Now that vacation you went on was that planned before, or you saw that black that that black lash? Like, Yo, I got to get the fuck out of here. Black lash. Man, listen. Um, the TVA came to me and said, <laughs> you probably don't wanna, "We can't we can't mess with the time stream, Hilton, but you probably want to go to Miami right after a blur." <laughs> just just like, book dog, the flight. We'll, uh, you just you'll know when you see it, right? You're right. Mm-hmm. Now that had been that had been booked for for months before beforehand um frankly we really didn't know what we were going to do as far as numbers and you know we were actually were expecting a pretty subdued crowd more akin to what we did in our year one which is just under 2000 mm-hmm. uh, but we ended up doing closer to 4500 oh, uh, so there was a lot of a lot of people and a lot going on uh and so it was it was a lot of work during that weekend so it was definitely a a well-timed even in the best of scenarios, uh, vacation. Okay, good to hear, good to hear. Now, how was Awesome Con? Awesome Con was really good. Uh, we have a relationship with them, uh, with Left Field Media, that's been really productive. As you know, uh, you know they brought in uh, us and our cosplay winner. They put our booths together. So I don't know if you saw the pictures, but we had like one big long booth. We had like this huge expanse right in front of our station. So mm. we turned up the music. We always bring music to our booths and uh, DJ and everything. And we just 
just blew the whole left side of uh, the, the convention center out for three days. And it was really, really dope. A uh, lot of positive energy. I mean, it was just a lot of people who hadn't been out. Some people, a lot of people who came to BlurCon came to AwesomeCon, but then the people who go to Otacon are not necessarily the same crowd that goes to uh, AwesomeCon. So it was good to see two separate crowds of people and kind of get full circle. Um, but uh, it was it was a real good time. Uh, a lot of walking. <laughs> the <laughs> right. center makes you walk. But it was a real good time. We had a really, uh, we had some great parties, you know, some great little reunions. Uh, and I mean, we're already promoing for 2022. So it was some good promo for that, too. Good, good, good. Now, uh, minus the bullshit, how was BlurCon 2021 to you from, like, I guess, the outsider's experience or just your experience in general? I will I will be the first to say that I'm the last person anybody should ask about how Blurred Con went. I never actually get to see Blurred. Okay, so minus the contest, right? <laughs> how were the panels? How was the ambiance, the feel, the blackness? Like how was everything oh, besides the con? The, oh. Yeah, the con, yeah, not just the fucking, you know, that one point hey by blue they top. Uh, no, actually, uh, you know, we came out of Blurred Con. You know, this thing it didn't hit until Monday. Mm. So, you know, we came through BlurCon and uh, people had a blast. You know, all of the reports, you know, and the feedback that we got from people, you know, just the, you know, some of the stuff we did was new. Uh, we had a third stage outside in the food truck rally area where we had mm. 23 acts performing. And, you know, there's some people who had some suggestions, maybe like oh, what kind of acts that they would want to see and that kind of stuff. Scheduling. You know, it's always that, you know, we have a lot going on at BlurCon more than most conventions. Mm. And so people are always a little uptight about the stuff they had to choose versus mm. something else that they wanted to do. And we kind of forced people to have to try to be in two places at once. Uh, so there was some things about scheduling, but everybody else was just like it was a great experience. And, you know, even with the uh, vaccine mandate, uh, you know, we really didn't see that much sheer of people not coming out. Um, and uh, it was just a really all all around good weekend. Um, mm. If you saw, uh, you know, just talking about, you know, the timing of how everything went, it was mid afternoon, late afternoon, Monday, when it finally got to me that this was becoming a thing. You know, it was like people in the contest, people in attendance at the contest, there was no beef. It was the rest of the con after. This is Saturday at six o'clock. This mm -hmm. happened, right? So mm -hmm. not the end of the con. So all night Saturday, all day Sunday, all Sunday afternoon. Bye. Thank you. You know, <laughs> announce 2022 like yeah. we always do. God mm -hmm. bless. Good night. Pack up. Nothing. Get home. And, you know, I, I tried to go to sleep. I look, my phone is, is you know, looking at me and saying, hey, you got way too many messages. For this <laughs> weekend. And that's when people are saying this thing is getting getting its own legs. We got to figure out what we got to do, get in front of it. And then trying to gather information after everybody had left the venue really slowed the response because, you know, nobody lives at BlurCon. I know the illusion is that we're all kind of like right around the area and we're all mm. two, three miles away. Mm -hmm. People was on the road to New York, Philly, North Carolina, Tidewater, Virginia Beach. People wasn't even home yet. I'm talking to people who's in their car driving. Like, what is this and what's going on? Trying to gather information. So it really was later that evening before I could really even wrap my head around, you know, all of the, the drama that was ensuing. So up until three in the afternoon on Monday, Burkheim mm -hmm. was beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> so it was beautiful, beautiful experience. <laughs> so it beautiful basically, experience. It basically wasn't an issue until the internet got his hands on it. Or as big For the most issue. part, yeah. I mean, you know, but that's how it normally works. You know, you get, yeah. you know, so it's like if if somebody comes up <clears throat> in like the middle of a concert or something and you're not paying that much attention and they give you a quick rib punch. Yeah. You know, it, it may hurt a little, but you know, it might take a little bit for it to for it to set in. Like the next day, mm. like, that motherfucker actually punch me. <laughs> and then you, know, you get on all like, hey, well, I need to meet you. We got to square this up. Yeah, or, or know, like Dave Chappelle, like what? Well, God damn, that was racist. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So it was kind of that kind of thing. It, it was really the internet and uh, you know, that really spun it out of control and and kind of really just the momentum and 
you know, it was just, it was, it got really, really, really ugly. And uh, if you saw the tone of my first response, it was because in, it was in response yeah. to all <laughs> yeah. that stuff. And I just, I, I got to put the brakes in before I even get all of the, the nuanced information about, you know, who this woman is and what happened with the contest and, you know, all of these other things that I really got to get my head around. Mm. Like people are getting their inboxes blown up and <clears throat> getting threatening messages and not just the, the girl, but like the staff and the cosplay contest judges and, you know, just down the line, people were just getting all kind of crazy stuff. And I was like, OK, I got to I got to at least pump the brakes on that mm. long enough for us to give us bias a day to, you know, get everybody home, sit down, talk and figure out what happened and what we're going to do, make a plan and then make another address. Right. Now, as a nigga that's been to the con, you know, from Friday to Sunday, it's a lot going on. I'm pretty wiped out. But Monday, I'm on your ass. <laughs> right. So now, um, first question I want to ask you, right, is, well, about this thing, right? Um, what is the mission statement of BlurCon? Oh, I mean, it's on the site. You know, mm. this is the idea. I just want you to say idea. it. <laughs> the, the idea, the ethos behind BlurCon's inception is to highlight and showcase, you know, Black nerd achievement and contribution and cosplay, anime, gaming, you know, music, you know, art, et cetera, et cetera. And have that be in an environment where, you know, we are in control of the transaction where we're not just selling Black art or we're not just showing Blurred contributions, but the people on the stage talking about it are representative of the subject matters that they're talking about, mm. getting people who are not normally on the stage or on the dais or behind the table at a panel, that opportunity to do their first panel or they do their first podcast or do their first in uh, con activity. Um, mm. You know, that's really what the con is about. Uh, and all of the stuff that we do is about taking that population that we know of you know that go to cons and are participating in the geek space and then expanding that you know because there's a lot of black nerds who do not participate in the blurred community and these are the people that we want to have come out to their first convention so we reach out and partner with high school programs and even some college programs we had Bowie State come through with a group of students uh, we had uh, Thurgood Marshall Academy in northeast DC excuse me mm. southeast DC come through you know, just to kind of bring this next generation of 14 to 18 year olds into a space that they may not be able to afford to come on their own, mm. or may not get permission to come to on their own. Um, and those are the kinds of environments that we create. The rest of it is internal commerce. This is you and you and you taking advantage of the space to have conversations, to have interactions, make connections on your own terms. Mm. And then we kind of stay back and just let things happen and try not to micromanage you know, every aspect of the con, especially since there is so much going on. Mm -hmm. So con starts, what, Thursday for like the VIPs or something like that, right? Yeah, that was one of the new things that we did. We did some uh, pre-con activities uh, for the VIPs, had a little reception and party. We did a full day of uh, registration for the VIPs on Thursday, mm -hmm. just for them. Um, we had DJs and gaming and a wet bar, all that kind of stuff happening. But then for everybody else, the convention starts at noon on Friday and goes to about three or four in the afternoon on Sunday nonstop. Right. So now Thursday goes off without a hitch. Friday, then we get to Saturday. Oh, there were hitches on Thursday. But oh, there were hitches on Thursday? <laughs> <laughs> there was, oh, man. Well, Phyllis said, what happened? Anything that we can uh, talk about that's not illegal? Uh, we'll get somebody no, arrested. No, it's, like not, it's, it's, all, it's all, you know, it's like the Wizard of Oz, you know, the man behind the curtain with the smoke and trying to keep everything together. Oh, it was you smoke. Know. <laughs> oh, man, listen, you just got to, like, get the DJ set up right. And all right. the video games aren't, aren't plugged in the way they're supposed to be. And, you know, the people are lining up and, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, anytime you're doing something new, man, there's, there's the, you just trying to keep the wheels on the cart, you know, just mm. come on, give me four hours. Let's do this four <laughs> hours, no hitches. And, mm. you know, but people, if people don't see it, that's a mark of success, not because nothing went wrong, but you didn't know something went wrong and that's, you know, but there was enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. This was, a, I mean, this was a high maintenance convention to manage. Uh, yeah. So, general. you know, <laughs> Be it that, you know, whatever happened Thursday, it doesn't compare to what happened to Saturday night. Right. So now were you actually at the contest when it was going on? The no, cosplay actually, contest. Yeah. 
No, I actually haven't seen a cosplay contest since 2018. Damn. Uh, okay. I make my I I put it on my little calendar. Like, okay, I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna stand in the back of the room. It's nice and dark. Nobody's gonna bother me. <laughs> and you know, you you make it halfway down to you've been to the venue. I make it down the first mm-hmm. escalator, no problem. Second escalator, you start hearing the Hilton. Let me buy you for a second. Hilton, let me holler at you. Hilton. <laughs> and no, there's a problem. Something something I gotta put out. And uh, the con the contest ironically enough only lasted like 45 minutes and that's what the, we did a wedding mm. in between the intermission <laughs> oh, wow. so oh, shit. oh yeah I, I did say I, I think i did see that in the uh the little rundown clip y'all did yeah yeah we, yeah. we did a we planned a full-blown wedding in the intermission between the that's dope as shit. And, <laughs> and it was lights on to lights off was 45 minutes by the time i got down the, to the second level right before i was gonna hop down the escalator they're like the contest is over like dang hmm. you know you, 45 minutes was gone I, usually <laughs> it's like two hours yeah but you know it it really 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 went fast right so that whole blow up took 45 minutes so i guess put a stain on the blur con name when it comes to a lot of people that went there be a first timers or people that have been there since the inception of it be a 2017 or, or, or whatever so the cosplay contest happens. Uh, you have how many contestants? Do you know? I think we had 19 entries. 19 uh, entries. 19 entries out of 50 slots that we set aside. Right. And uh, not even all 19 were qualified to actually, you know, because a lot of the costumes were purchased. Uh, uh, uh-huh. Some of them had not made. Uh, I think it's like you have to make 80 percent of it in order Mm. to compete for the main prize. Uh, We added some into the contest uh, through a separate contest that was being done by Black Cosplay Boosters. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there was a couple more people they were able to get up on the stage and showcase their stuff. Um, But yeah, it was a a relatively small contest to begin with. Okay. So out of those 19, the judges pick one person to win. Now, who were the judges? Well, those were the cosplay guests. Cosplay guests. Mm-hmm. So All, every year, the cosplay guests are the judges for the cosplay contest. Okay, so it's like when we went two thousand nineteen. It was um, was it? It was it was yeah. It was the uh, cosplay guests that were the, that were the judges. So it's the same thing every mm-hmm. year. So they get up there at BlurCon and say, "Hey, this white woman <laughs> had the best." cosplay i don't know what credentials i don't know what credentials they went by i don't know what checklists they checked but they said this white woman had the best cosplay in this black ass convention <laughs> they didn't read the room pretty sure it was the sea of black people they got up there and said that white woman won that contest so white woman is is elated from what i hear a i won i love y'all fuck with y'all i'm here i'm here to to celebrate nerd shit cool she, I mean, she gets out of the the area that the cosplay contest is getting is is taking place at, and then it's just total eruption of <laughs> fuck BlurCon, damn, we can't never have shit. Um, I'm never supporting BlurCon again. They'll never see another dollar mine. Um, first, first of all, how does that make you feel when people take this one incident from this? cultural thing that, that we're trying to build from from the ground up. We always complain that black people never have shit. And then when we create it, you know, we like to tear it down as fast as we create it. How does that make you feel that people are already like throwing away blur kind of as like, I'm not fucking with them no more? Well, you know, on its face, it's disappointing. I mean, as anybody who creates a convention, you know, it's like uh, if you go to King's Dominion, and there's, I don't know, 30 roller coasters or something like that at Kingdom. There's a lot of rides there. And mm. you get on one ride on the last day of your, or the last hour of your visit, and you get stuck upside down in one of the loops. Mm. Now, so I understand that it's fuck King's Dominion after that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like back, sure. it's the, right. You know, it doesn't matter. Oh, it was the big bad wolf that, that messed up. Scooby Doo was fine. You know, no, it's all like the whole thing is ruined for you if that happens. Uh, the ironic thing is that, you know, it was a spectrum. 
you know, there were people on every spectrum of it that were, you know, concerned or upset or complaining. The people who were on the full out fuck BlurCon, they never get another dollar of mine. Most of those people weren't at BlurCon. A good chunk of those people have never been to BlurCon and mm. never will come to BlurCon. So we have to we have to delineate, you know, the people who have legitimate concerns and are upset and, you know, have questions versus the people who are always waiting in the wings. I think we're probably this, you could probably find this with any convention, but I know who mine are, uh, who are just waiting to tear down the convention no matter what. Like somebody could have not put enough sugar in the Kool-Aid on Sunday and, and they would. <laughs> right. There are people who just, their brand is hating blurred kind of you, you kind of take that, that group and you put them over here and then you have the folks in the middle who are upset and, you know, they're hurt. Uh, and it's enhanced because this partnership that we did with AwesomeCon mm. was in an effort to extend the, the experience and extend the uplifting, you know, that we want the contest to have outside of BlurredCon. You know, being the number one contest winner, cosplay contest winner at BlurredCon is great and wonderful. But I was looking at it as, well, you know, how can we make this an opportunity for this person as a cosplayer in general? So what can we do beyond, you know, the dollars and the trophy and all that, you know, so one, the winner of the contest was going to be one of the judges and the, you know, on the guest list as a cosplayer for BlurredCon 2022. Mm. Then there was the uh, guest slot at AwesomeCon and AwesomeCon has an issue where they really want you know, to have blurred representation. And this serves, you know, their diversity needs as well. And we're really happy to be a part of that, that mission for them as well. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's just, it, it hits on like three, four levels. Whereas, you know, in previous years, you know, the person would have got their $50 or whatever the prize money is, a little trophy, and they would walk up stage and you never would have heard from them again. Mm. But now you've got this person representing blurred con theoretically at, you know, this larger convention, you know, and in DC, Awesome Con is the largest convention in DC, nerd convention, it's like 80,000 people come to that. Right. So this opportunity is supposed to represent the uplift of black cosplay even beyond the contest. So it added so much insult to injury for everybody that I understand why it caught fire. I understand why it got legs, um, even though some of it was irresponsible, but that's just a quadrant that it's over here, like we were talking about before. Um, so what you have to do is you have to explain to people, you know, cause most people don't know how cosplay contests go, you know, even people mm. who weren't there, you know, have legitimate questions and concerns, you know, they may think, oh, Hilton walked a white woman up onto the stage <laughs> and said, here, give this white woman a shot at representing black nerddom judges. And right. the judge is like, hmm, I don't know, Hilton, this is a black, you know, room and it's a black con. Are you sure? I'm sure. Write it down. She's your queen to be. You know, all of that. <laughs> you know, there's people who don't know if that's how it goes because they don't know how cosplay contests work. I was like, I wasn't even there. I didn't even know a white woman had won until Monday. You know, mm. it was it was not this thing that until Monday. Engineered. Damn. Yeah. I, so listen, wait, I'm wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so you're telling me is that this happened Saturday evening. Sunday yep. goes on. You don't hear shit. Uh, I'm guessing you're, you're ripping and running on Sunday. You don't have really much time to check your phone. I'm guessing. I don't know. So then oh, Monday. Nothing came to me. Nothing. No, okay. So nothing came to you that night at all. No. No not DMs. Not a face to face. What the fuck is hell in that? I need to talk to him right now. He ain't in the barbershop. Space table. Nothing. Ain't nobody nothing. see you say nothing. <laughs> nothing. Listen, I'm telling you, it's the if you want to talk about another layer of disappointment, is that I don't know however many people, 150, I don't know how many people who decided to get online and, and you know, at my judges or at my staff or at this, this woman, the one, mm. but nobody messaged me. And that's just how it works. You know, nobody, nobody likes to really come directly to me for stuff. I mean, even if it's to say, fuck you, you know, nobody <laughs> really wants to, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what, what it is. I, I, you know, people have told me different things and, you know, like, oh, you know, people are intimidated. I'm like, no, Why? <laughs> I'm always smiling and I'm goofy. There's really not anything to be intimidated about, you know, with me, I don't have a magic wand, you know, whatever. So, 
no, nobody's messaging me like what the hell Hilton and why this Hilton and da 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 until Monday when the internet got a hold of it and it reached this noise level, this fever pitch. Now, mm. Monday, I had a lot of people. Now, these are people that are close to me, like people who know me, who are like, hey, I don't know if you are hearing what's happening <laughs> over on TikTok. Or I don't know if you've logged in and start and did a, did a search for the hashtag BlurredCon on, you know, uh, Twitter or YouTube, but this is really blowing up and da da da. You need to get mm. ahead of this, da da da. So even then, it's just the people in my circle, you know, of friends and colleagues who are, are reaching because they're hearing it. But there mm. isn't anybody like, you know, DMing me saying, you know, we want answers and all this sort of stuff. And like I said, it wasn't until Monday where it was like, wait a minute, like, all right, everybody, you know, whoever I can get on the phone, fill me in. What happened? Give me the blow by blow. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm I'm Saturday. You know, I got a concert to do. Got to make sure the party comes off. You know, I mean, there's so many things that are, that are trying to take the wheels off the structure of the cart that I'm really focusing on this stuff. But mm. like during the convention, nobody was really talking about it during. I mean, they if they were, it might have been off in their rooms, but it wasn't like groups of people making noise and shaking their fist or <laughs> following me around or at the con. The people at the con had a great experience. It's the the acid indigestion that kicked in on Monday for the, <laughs> the three day tacos that they ate that, that really was when it kicked in. I know it sounds crazy, uh, but, but there's really, that's <laughs> funny. That's really how it went down. Now, um, I guess Monday when the shit hit the fan, right. Um, I saw a little sprinklings of like, you know, rundowns of, of what happened at, at blur Con, but I, I didn't know what the fuck they was talking about. So maybe like Wednesday or Thursday, I wasn't just, paying attention to what happened at BlurredCon because I wasn't there. But even still, I just wanted to know what the fuck was going on. So when I started seeing, like, you know, hashtag CoonCon, like, hashtag, like, kind of BlurredCon, like, I, I, I was seeing all types of wild shit. But then it was like, you know, I guess the, 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 the vitriol and, like, the anger was just all about this white woman within the car. Like, do you do you actually understand why people are upset or do you just be like hey this was this was always an all-inclusive event and she had the best cosplay like a white woman won a cosplay competition at a convention specifically catered to black nerds and you know that was always in the mission statement like all-inclusive you know everyone's you know when 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 i was there in 2019 i saw gay straight asian white uh latin uh non-binary whoever i saw whoever there everybody enjoying they enjoying their nerdy ass time but as soon as a white woman win the cosplay competition at BlurCon, everybody just seems to fucking lose it like do you understand why people are mad though or do you just be like oh absolutely absolutely <laughs> okay. and, and so you know that's kind of where i started off at is trying to fun you know fundamentally understand you know where the spectrum starts and stops you know, mm. concern to anger to outrage and what people are outraged about. And, uh, you know, again, just like I said, it was layers, you know, on its face, you know, it's just, you know, it, it, it's like jumbo shrimp. It's like these these two words that, that are just antithetical to one another existing in one one situation. And it was a series of decisions that just you know, as I'm I'm learning now, it probably took me about a week and a half to really get the full picture that she had a black group of friends that she was there with. Yeah. And they pushed her to to jump, go go into the contest. You know, yeah, you got this. You got dope cosplay and, you know, you're plus size and or, or whatever. And, you know, she's like, oh, like okay, if she won a space know. tournament, I can get it. I get that. <laughs> cosplay, I'm like, all right, dog, maybe I just wasn't up to par. <laughs> <laughs> right and i i think like she, i think there was a series she, she, there she was on boston on niggas <laughs> in, in they space like yo, yo what is this what who who gave her the she code <laughs> like <laughs> what part of dc is she from she from that black part of dc ain't she <laughs> right 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 you know but i think with the cosplay piece it was uh more about you know there was hurt because people are looking at it in the big picture like i said it's digesting this and it and then it comes back up when it really hits, you know, what, what does this mean? Oh, you're telling me a white woman is going to be representing BlurredCon 
in Black Nerd cosplay at Awesome Con and as a guest oh. next year at Blurred Con and you know all that sort of <laughs> stuff. And and I totally understand. And you know what I tried to to kind of let people know is that you know the in the lane between you know divert I mean uh, uh you know blame and responsibility you know I'm responsible because I put the structure of the contest together and there's no speed bumps on there for anybody of any race you know to be highlighted and be elevated to that position mm. and while legally you know there's there's a whole quadrant of people in this argument that are thinking, you know, well, why do black, white people have to be there at all? And, you know, why does, why do black folks stuff have to be inclusive? And mm. all cons are inclusive. The black, the name, the blackest con, you know, that you think is blacker than blurred con. And I guarantee you, they got white people to go there too. Some mm. of them have white guests. This is all, they're all inclusive. But when you have something as high profile as a cosplay contest winner at a con the size of blurred con, you know, those things go to another level. I mean, white people have always been at BlurredCon. It's just like you said, 2019, mm-hmm. you saw a mix of people, but they were dissipating. You know, they weren't the show, you know, and the cosplay contest is the only place at BlurredCon where structurally someone who was part of, who's just participating, who's just there observing, uh, you know, uh, could elevate themselves to the forefront of the convention. And that happened. And so I had to come up with, and this took a couple of days because, you know, you got, you know, okay, what can we legally do? And, you know, we're wrangling with, before she relinquished her, her, her prize, you know, like, okay, how do we go about, you know, altering the situation with her in the, in the winner's chair, right? Mm-hmm. What do we do? You know, because mm-hmm. obviously we can't, we, you know, we can't have the blurred con representative be you know, you fucking know, white, like Anglo-Saxon, like Caucasian white. <laughs> just movie. yeah, I mean, so we, so I'm, I'm planning, I'm planning ways to to work around that. But she had already relinquished the prize. I think she realized, you know, it dawned on her that like, oh shit, like okay, this I really misread this room. I misread my place uh, as a attendee and what the con was about and opportunities that I might have taken away from other really great black cosplayers who were in the contest. And you know it. You know this is these. This is how we learn. Like sometimes like that's you guys bullshit. Take a, yeah, well, if she you know, had this, the best cost, yeah. if she had the best costume, like why? I don't, this is this is a conversation that we were having whenever we uh, the, the the news dropping this. I don't and I don't have the answer for it, but like if she had the best costume, I don't understand. And like now going forward with the uh, representing stuff that I get, but in general, just her winning the contest, I don't understand if she had the best costume. If she didn't have the best costume, that's a different conversation to have at a different time. But if she just had the best costume, you can't be mad at her for wanting to participate in something. She spent her money to go to visit this convention to do this stuff and she wanted to participate and then she happened to win. Like I don't so I don't get why you're, she was you're not the you're not alone. I, I, I there was a whole there was a whole <laughs> quadrant of the spectrum that was there. And and almost to the letter, what you just said, they had that same position uh, and had a lot of, you know, real valid thoughts around, you know, what what does it mean to have a cosplay contest, you know, that excludes, you know, cosplayers of any quality or skill level, you know, yada, it's yada, a yada. Cop, it's a cosplay contest at BlurCon. It is not a black cosplay contest. <laughs> right, right. But this year, I think it's different because the winner that prize pack, what that represented was so much more above and beyond what we had ever done before or any con ever. I don't know of any mm-hmm. conventions that partner with another con to say, not only are you going to win here, but we're going to make mm-hmm. sure that you get your first show over there. You're going to get two guest slots, mm-hmm. you know, to launch your cosplay career from this win, from this stage. Mm-hmm. And this- Yeah, that's not crazy. When I, that, that's not crazy yeah, now that, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> That does change. Yeah, that sounds crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know, so so I was excited by the idea and the 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 one the the, the cosplayer who was elevated to the winning slot, uh, Kiwi Nina Mori. Uh, you know, she already had. She's at this moment. She's at PoochieCon. She got called by PoochieCon before she even got to uh, uh, AwesomeCon. So she's she's doing a cosplay, you know, guest slot up in uh, New Jersey. 
Mm. So it's working. You know what? My idea worked like, you know, so I'm, I'm happy for that because I think this is a formula that that I can replicate in other areas, you know, and and find ways to take dope black cosplayers and dope black creators and dope blurred musicians and comedians and anyone who's there participating in some way and find ways to extend the reach of the stage of blurred con to encompass other nerd spaces that are not necessarily nerd specific. And uh, I think that's the key. That is the part that I think probably added that critical amount of fuel to the fire that, that made people really see this as an impact because of that. Um, now on me, what I failed to do was to consider that this could happen and that this could happen in such a way that, you know, we would be faced with having you know, somebody who's not representing the blurred community, representing the blurred community, right. you know, whatever, whatever. And uh, that's a wild ass thing so, to put on a resume as, as a white person. <laughs> it, it, you know, but you know, it's like this, someone said to me like, Oh, you know, NAACP is giving awards to white people for, but yeah, but those are like special, lifetime achievement awards or you know some side award or something like that they're not winning you know black image award for <laughs> justin timberlake or something like that it's, you know what i mean it's yo you if know, soul train had a justin timberlake award <laughs> lifetime right, achievement you know, award shit. yeah you know it's not the same thing um so what what we had to do was come up with a way in which that prize that number one prize even in an inclusive environment, an inclusive con where people can participate just as anyone else would uh, in any way that anyone would in the con, regardless of their race or gender or orientation, yada, 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 uh, is to make that prize qualify to, you know, a black nerd. Mm. And I said, well, you know what? I can't make a contest within a ticketed event that only allows for black people to participate. That's that's a lawsuit that, that's you know, nobody's going to give me 10 cents for my legal defense fund for it. So I'm not even going that way. I mm. said, but this number one prize is going to be the Black Cosplayer of the Year Award. Right. So mm. the judges to their defense, and I, I really tried to drive this home, but it's so complicated that I never really get to it. There was nothing for the judges. There's no mechanism for them to steer the ship away from the, the white woman or, or anyone else who's participating in the con. Mm. Everyone's getting these worksheets mm -hmm. and they're all sitting at, at different stations and people come up and they stand in 10 feet away and, you know, they can approach and everything and they're writing numbers. Hey, one through 10, how was the craftsmanship? 10. Mm -hmm. How was the presentation? Eight, you know, blah, blah, blah. They're mm -hmm. not sharing this information. They're writing down what is given to them. They do the, the fucking oh. paper bag test and be like, ah, she can't win because she's <laughs> right. There's no, there's nowhere on this. It's like SET, SET bubble points. test, you know, it's like, it's cheap, you know, <laughs> so there's really, you know, they'd have no sense of like, they're not coming together with this meeting where we're like, okay, the what do you think of so-and-so? Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like these, these sheets are collected because we want it to be objective mm -hmm. and we want it to be sterile. This is another reason why I don't, I don't go backstage. I don't go anywhere near the contest. Because, you know, there's people just waiting to say the fix is in, you know, <laughs> and even on when, you know, we have the fight. If it's not black and white, you know, in 2019, it was armor versus sewing, you yeah. know, in 2017, it was, oh, you know, I think Hilton knew the, the girl who won or, you know, she works for BlurredCon or something mm -hmm. like that. And I said, man, listen, you know, there's money involved with this prize. And there's a lot of work and a lot of personalities in the cosplay community. I'm going to keep myself as far away from that process as possible. So it never really dawned on me that, man, you know, somebody could just come up in here and win, regardless of the ethos of the contest or the ethos of the prize pack or the ethos of the con. And there's no there's no speed bumps. There's no breaks. There's no potholes once somebody enters to how far they can go. So mm -hmm. this new structure is going to allow for anybody still can enter if they want. We're going to probably do some different things with, uh, you know, the qualifications for, you know, how much of your cosplay did you make versus buy uh, or assemble, uh, that sort of thing. But this, this cosplayer of the year, Black Cosplayer of the Year award is going to be more like a, a Mr. or Miss America thing. Mm -hmm. Because this person mm -hmm. is not just going to be the best 
uh, among the best cosplayers at the con, they're also going to be representing BlurredCon at another convention, at least one other convention. They're going to be representing BlurredCon as a guest the following year. And everybody might not be down for that. Mm-hmm. You know, so we can't just use a check sheet because there's, you know, this, there's some cosplayers out there that are huge talents Crazy. who that shy to a fault don't won't speak in a room with more than three people, like, mm-hmm. you know, and now I'm gonna put you on a stage, you know, I'm gonna put you on four stages, I'm gonna send you to New Jersey, I'm gonna send you to no, like, that ain't nah, with like, that shit. they don't want it. No. So, you know, if somebody is not interested in that, they'll have the opportunity during the Q&A, which is a new thing that'll be added. Mm-hmm. Somebody is going to ask questions. Hey, how, what do you think about the state of black cosplay? How do you please think let me do it. Can I do it? Please, can know? I do it? Oh God! No. We, <laughs> <laughs> please, you. I promise, I promise I'll be asshole. I might as well light like no. blur con on fire now. Just, <laughs> just let it burn. Oh, this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine, right? I thought I had a job. Uh, but no joke. All joking aside. But those are the kind of of solutions and remedies that we were we were we would normally do in problem solving. Mm. But I think that. Um, you know, there are people and I mean, you guys are out in the world, you know, so, you know, there's people that, you know, that say blur con at least once a day mm-hmm. and in a negative sense, you know, and they wake up every day in a, in a cold mm-hmm. sweat screaming blur con <laughs> <laughs> and they waiting for blur con to trip so they can, you know, yeah. they can make hay of it. And those people are always going to be there. And I think this gave them an opportunity to blow a lot of air to feed this fire beyond the people who attend because i look i look i i I actually you know a week after once i had time to actually comb through some of these uh you know youtube videos and stuff and i looked and i was like okay this person's saying something crazy you know coon con all that kind of stuff and i'm like Mm. i don't see you attending i'm going to your profile you're not attending no cons you're Mm -hmm. a cosplayer you got no blurred credentials anywhere in your profile i don't know Mm. you we don't have any mutual friends and i'm just like OK, it's not a loss if you tell me you're not I'm not getting no more of your money and I've never gotten none of your money and mm. never was going to get none of your money. I mean, you know, some people just want to say something and they mm. said what they said and they move on. But the people I'm really focused on are when the people who attended the convention, the people who are, you know, making balanced, even, you know, even in their outrage, like, yo, you know, I, I have a, a real question on how we're going to fix this going forward. Hilton, talk to me. You know, those are the folks that I'm I'm really able to 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 assuage and 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 are willing to listen to solutions, whereas mm. others, not so much. Right. Now, I saw this on Twitter as as well. I don't know if it's true, but I gotta ask you. Um, I heard somebody say that in all the years of BlurCon, there's been one black cosplay winner. Is that true? No. Uh, okay. Year one. Uh, was black and Korean, but she was darker than me, so I didn't even know she was half Asian. But uh, mm. then uh, 2019, uh, we had uh, oh, what's the princess in the frogs princess name? Tiana. Tiana. She had the green. Yeah, yeah, she won. Mm. Uh, but yeah, you're right. This is not the first time a white person has won the cosplay contest. 2018, we had a blind cosplayer uh, who sewed her own dress. Right mm. now, this again, I didn't see, like I said, I didn't see this, uh, but I saw the pictures and uh, the controversy was, you know, I mean, people were kind of like, uh, but it didn't go nowhere. Um, and I kind of looked at it as kind of like a freak accident, like, OK, you know, uh, you know, what, a, what, huh? You know, OK, well, they got the prize. You know, there's not too much of a dust up about it. You know, apparently there was consensus why consensus that this person had the best cosplay enough to the point where it maybe trumped this person i don't know it, it never got to the point where we really had to examine it mm. but i did look at it as a oh okay this was a freak accident you know it's like a car accident in front of your house like oh you know that's yeah. not because of the pothole up the street you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was control. this is just jesus deciding that there's going to be a car wreck in front of my house this year and boom mm. and uh you know if i could do it over again Again, I'm real big on responsibility, even for things that I'm not necessarily directly to blame for. If I could do it over again, I would have probably done something similar to what we just did for what's going to be 2022 back in 2018. But since we come out in 2019 and, you know, the whole top five was black in Mm -hmm. 2019, 
And yep. I was like, oh, okay. It was a freak accident. You know, look, look at that. You know, it's, this is, this is a nice, you know, pantheon of winners on stage mm. and, you know, little controversy of armor versus sewing, which is always going to be there. Right. But other than that, it was gone. So I was like, oh, okay, well, it's not as much of a problem as I thought it would be. Turned out I was wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, have you personally talked to the cosplay winner? The the woman who won? The woman, the first yeah, the, the woman that won. I never got the chance. Listen, I made my first statement on Monday. And I, it sounds like y'all saw it. This was mm-hmm. Monday night. And I mean, I was, I'm, I was probably working off a four or five hours sleep for the whole three, four day weekend. Right. Uh, My throat was just dry. And I was like, I just gotta, I just gotta put the brakes on the harassment just so that we can bring the temperature down enough for us to take a day to address the situation in another post. So I took that opportunity expecting to be able to have a conversation with this person, maybe Mm. the next day or, or something to say, okay, what, what, what do we do here? You know what? You know that kind of stuff. Tuesday, she relinquished the prize, and then shut all her social media off. So I didn't have a oh, she, oh, she did a, she did a Macklemore. Oh mm. yeah, she she shut everything. <laughs> She's gone. She's gone off of the internet. Yeah, man, the the bridge, the right? yeah. I mean, the she's, she's still on. She's still on Twitter, but you know, I'm not even. Well, I mean, when I say off, I don't know that you can just delete a profile like that. But she's not on. Not you active know, social media. Yeah, she's all, not right? active. You yeah, can't yeah, message, yeah, yeah. right? And because it was, it it got really ugly and it got really rough uh, for a minute there. And I didn't get a chance to come around and and have any kind of direct conversation with her before she relinquished the uh, the position. Mm, okay. Um. Where, where want to go next with this? <laughs> Why was there so much smoke for BlurCon as a whole and not just the judges? Because you, so the judges were invited there by you know i guess you know like a collective of the, the blur con staff and they don't represent blur con per se right they right. you know they're judges they're you know outsourced they have their own opinions or whatever the case they chose the winner so why was it blur con as a whole took a hit and not just the judges you feel well i mean i think there was for some people again they don't know that the judges don't work for blurred con. Like I've had, I've seen so many people post y'all need to get new judges next year. And I was like, well, they don't work for us. Like, Same judges, it's <laughs> different judges every year. <laughs> right. Right. And you know, I, I could sit back and take for granted that everybody knows how cons work, but apparently that's not the case. Mm-hmm. So that might be part of it. You know, that people are thinking that these are folks from inside the circle that, you know, we have this long relationship with, but cosplayers are under the aegis of the con for the weekend of the convention, and then that's mm. it. So mm. when people are are saying, oh, you know, so-and-so cosplay judge said something I didn't like, you know, what do you have to say about that? And I'm like, they said that on Tuesday. This person's <laughs> contract ended on Sunday the 19th at 5 o'clock. Right. Uh, nothing to do with their life after they leave the con space right. and, and everything. And so they can say what they want to say. I can agree or disagree or, you know, whatever, whatever. But everyone who I read their statements were quick to preface to say, I'm not representing blurred con. I'm not speaking for anybody but myself. Mm. And as inartful as some of those statements were, you know, they were in response to like this constant badgering, uh, you know, and, and yeah. our PR operation didn't get a chance to even, you know, before things really, really were just turning left and turning right. Normally, if something really crazy happens or potentially crazy happens, we'll have a moment or a, or a, a window to say to the department involved, don't answer any questions. We're going to come out with a statement from the con and that will be, you know, the official statement and it'll answer all the questions. But we don't want you talking to people responding to tweets and all that you know, these folks are, are hitting these guys up directly. And again, they're not part of the staff. They're not part mm. of the department. So, you know, if Dax gets a tweet that's mean and, and somebody's saying something and, you know, Dax is like, nah, and, and wants to clap back, that <laughs> I, I'm not in a position to call Dax and go, hey, 
private citizen. Uh, I need you. Don't do that thing. I need you to. I need you to eat a little more shit on our behalf. Uh, right. a couple of days. Like, no, you know, not gonna pay you, you know. but yeah. right, exactly. It's like you off the clock, but you know. So, yeah, I think there's a. Uh, like I was saying before, there are people who wake up every morning and say BlurredCon before they brush their teeth. Just so that BlurredCon can come across their mouth when their bo- breath is the worst it's going to be. <laughs> Just that's how much they hate Blur. There are people who hate BlurredCon since 2016. They be saying in the mirror and... like Candyman? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, they really, really, really have it in for us. Ah, car uh, captain. They, <laughs> but they don't really have the... Hilton, you know, Hilton. They don't uh... necessarily... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, if I if I said uh, names and anybody here would know them, you go, oh damn, he is so right. Like you know, it's <laughs> it's that crazy. Uh, and again, these are folks. A lot of these folks, like there's one I haven't talked to since I haven't exchanged any words with since 2016. And this <laughs> person's writing the same article, <laughs> you know, every time something that you know a, a cosplayer. I'm not even joking. A cosplayer got their cosplay caught in the door in a. Uh, in the elevator, blurred con. I think it might have been 2018, 2019. This person got on there and tried to spin it. Like, see, this is why I, t- I tell you the blurred con ain't for black people. <laughs> they try to they try to lynch him. This, this, this. The and elevators like, is racist. <laughs> right? Like, I'm, I'm like, how'd I get in the elevator with the brothers? Like, what is what? Why is you know? Oh, elevator just tried to trap me. <laughs> Your <the> mind. <laughs> <laughs> think you know uh, so yeah this is this represented for that group of people an opportunity to try and make as do as much damage to the convention as they can and these folks are the ones that you know if you look at they'll make first of all they make more than one post mm. and their their analysis is not fair they're making you know very sweeping judgments about the con in general anyone who says that the 45 minutes of that contest represents the entire experience of the of the 57 hours of blurred con that's what i'm talking somebody about. who's on who's usually in that that boat way over here on the right mm-hmm. that's like okay I'm, I'm gonna see how i can you know just really really just rile this whole thing up mm-hmm. and they're always there and, I, and they always will be you know i mean with listen black people aren't 100 percent on nothing right <laughs> you can't find you can't find anything that 100 percent of black people not grits not not <laughs> season salt, nothing yeah. you think it's 100 percent, but if you if uh. you post if you get into a position of influence or volume of voice or elevation and you say man i love grits there's gonna be five people that's gonna <laughs> sure, I put throat. sugar <laughs> like I, you know i saw a horror story on grits the other day i saw somebody put flour on their grits mm. i almost died that's cornmeal ain't it no 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 <laughs> that, that disturbed me because i had grits this morning and just flour. the idea of flower that's a whole flower but, <laughs> I cried but, but i'm just saying that those those people exist for blurred con and we're doing i i always knew that was going to be the case you know mm. uh when we incepted blurred con and we put it together everybody was waiting for this army of white people or <laughs> you know asian people or whatever to come and try and mow us down you know uh, uh and i was like nah the probably the biggest and most vocal criticism of blurred con is going to come from people that look like us because we're doing how it is all the time. a lot of yeah. things that are so different. And if we achieve any success, I mean, listen, I'm not bragging on BlurredCon, but this is just a objective fact. BlurredCon has had the kind of explosive success that is rare amongst conventions. Mm-hmm. And if we were flying under the radar year four, we were under a thousand people and it was a small con, nobody would care what we were doing. But when you start off at 2000 people, and 2019 is like 6,500 people. And we're mm. on track for like 8,000 people next year. You know mm. what I mean? That's that's not normal for most conventions, you know? And people feel a certain way about that. You know, that's just how human nature is. And they saw this opportunity like, oh man, I'm, let me write this think piece. Hold up, people are going to care what I have to say. I'm gonna make sure they retweet it and they're gonna resend it. And it's, and it's it's the same three articles. They put three articles on this. Mm-hmm. They're all get it's just you know they're getting posted and reshared by the same people. And I'm just like, there's like forty articles, Hilton. What are we gonna do? Like, no, it's three. They're all mm-hmm. the same. It's three articles. It's the same three being retweeted. Yeah, you yeah know. they didn't created the but, but of doom the against spirit. you. Goddamn. Like- <laughs> 
Listen, man. I'm, I'm, the Akatsuki, goddammit. Con- what we're doing is controversial. Mm. You know, there are people who, like, you know, who really, really, really do not like the fact that there are non black people in any way associated with the con in attendance in the building, mm. you know, sitting behind the engineering booth at behind the state, they don't, nothing. They just cannot stand that. That will be the forever point that they will always hate us for. There are folks that, you know, don't like the way I brought blurred con up. I didn't, I, I am the first to say I didn't kiss any rings on, <laughs> on my way into doing blur cut. There, mm. are, there are a lot of established conventions out there that feel like what, you know, nigga didn't talk to me. <laughs> and and you know there's some indignation to that you know for some people and i understand it you know um but again there are folks who are outside of the bubble like you guys objective people who uh you know they're just like man this is making a lot of noise what in the hell is going on <laughs> oh, but we missed one year <laughs> yeah, we missed Hilton, one fucking saying, year <laughs> hilton burned down crystal city <laughs> we did not cover it this is a missed opportunity <laughs> oh up. shit! <laughs> just woke up one day, the so, world was on fire. <laughs> one day, the world was on fire. This this was the day, and you know, so yeah, the most for most people, you know, once they saw the plan to move forward, and you know, it it made sense to them, you know, they're like, okay, we're gonna see what happens next year, and we're gonna see what twenty twenty two is, you know, starts to get mapped out to be. Mm. Uh, but then there's others who, no matter what you say. You know, you just they're not listening. They are not paying any attention to I have a question. And then you answer the question. And well, I have that same question again, Mm. just to ask it. So people think it's still an issue. (laughs) Well, now, but 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 the the question is right. And you're like, okay, this person's not really trying to to hear the solution. Well, fuck them. We don't need them. Yeah. So now, before I ask you about uh, 2022 and your plans for that, what I want to know is, after the blow up, what was that first staff meeting like? <laughs> like, oh, did y'all did did y'all come on Zoom or did y'all you know go into a conference room? It's like, hey, we kind of fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, what, what happened? What was the energy in that room? Well, again, you know, we have. To, just because the structure of conventions is the way it is, uh, we have silos. So mm-hmm. programming is not aware of any of the stuff that's going on with cosplay and guests in the cosplay oh. contest. Okay. They're sitting up on the third floor in a back room, making sure the panels go and you know everybody's projectors are working and everybody's on schedule and people are reporting no shows, updating the site, yada, yada, yada. They got people in registration. They spend the whole con sitting behind a table you have your ID, please, you know, da, 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 da. they don't mm-hmm. know what's going on. So we didn't have to necessarily have like this big come to Jesus meeting so much as just for me to come forward and say, okay, this is where we are. And we're going to craft three sets of statements that are going to go out. We didn't do much crafting with the first one, but the mm-hmm. second one, and then was the, the first one yours that you deleted? That one? Yes. Or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. One, okay. Yes, All right. Yes, that, was, that was me. Because people were like, the message is, I, I got to say I something. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. People were like, you can't hide from this, Hilton. You can't hide <laughs> from the issue. You can't hide from this. You got no, to say not, something. No, I don't know what to say to y'all. And I'm like, I got to find, I don't even know what happened. All I know is this is one one and everybody's mad and I got to da 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 da. And uh, so that one, I was like, look, I just got to stop the harassment. That's the that's my responsibility at the very moment. That's the only thing I'm really going to focus on as mm. far as that. And then the second one, we can kind of once we get more information. So we really didn't put the rest of the team in any position where they had to make any statement because nobody's asking registration what happened at the Cosway contest. Mm. You know, nobody's asking the stage manager for the outside concert or the coordinator for the food truck rally, you know, about it. They're, they're talking to the cosplay judges one or two people they think are associated with it and um you know ostensibly me i mean of course nobody's messaging me directly from you know the the mob but you know, <laughs> the people in my circle are and so yeah we had that meeting and we was like okay we we have to figure out a way to do this like how do we 
address legitimate concerns about representation and uplift and, you know, the ethos of the convention mm. while still staying within, you know, what the legal confines are for, you know, exclusion from public events, you know? Mm. Um, so we had to kind of, you know, figure this out so that the, the idea that I was so excited about, you know, this ability to take the blurred con cosplay winner and elevate them even above and beyond our stage and put them on at least two other stages, uh, which will probably end up by the time we get to next year, you know, our cosplay winners probably gonna end up on about five stages you know, by the time the end of the year comes around. So oh. it's a really, really good thing. How do we do that and make sure that it's meeting its purpose? Mm. You know, cause this isn't about elevating blurred con. This is about elevating the community, you know, this is about elevating, you know, the hard work and talent in the blurred community in this particular lane, it's cosplay, right? So how do we do that, you know? And so we talk with some people, you know, like my business partner, Haas, you know, he's got a JD. So, you know, he knows a little bit about law and mm -hmm. how to look things up. And that's what we came up with what I put forward to you guys just a little while ago. Uh, but I mean, we knew that this, the community has a news cycle and a lot of people we i knew as like at some point they're going to overplay their hand and people will go oh, okay all right over there i'm mad too but you're doing you're on some other stuff <laughs> yeah. so not, you know mm. that's you you way out of bounds like we're not even talking about that we just want to know what we're going to do to make sure this represents us and in the way that the founding is supposed to mean mm. and uh yeah, and inevitably, you know, a lot of the the real haters overplayed their hand, and there's people, <laughs> there's some posts up now talking about why are y'all still? Hilton was on, you saw me on Head Nerds in Charge. Mm -hmm. I was on the three yeah. hours <laughs> answering. <laughs> That's why I didn't ask half the questions I wanted to ask because like they already covered it, so I ain't gonna rehash it. I, you know, I I, I love Curtis uh, for what he did, uh, but I told him I said, here's why I need you, and this is why I'm reaching out to you first. He said, why? I said, because you're messy and you're loud. <laughs> and, and I need I need you to use your messiness and loudness and, you know, your irreverence <laughs> to create a neutral platform, you know, where, you know, you know, if you if I'm wrong or if I'm saying something that's, you know, off off key or if there's something that I'm trying to hide, you you bring some ripples, know. nigga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, make we can get this money. message out here so I ain't gotta go on all these fucking platforms and answer <laughs> the same question eight times. Mm -hmm. right? Three said, ninjas look, might be want, where it stops. <laughs> I don't even want I said I don't even want to see the questions. I'm like I'm, as many questions as you get from submitted. And he said he got like 200 of them, but there was a lot of repeats. Yeah. I said, as mm -hmm. many questions as you get submitted, I will stay on air to answer until you run out. And that was my thing. Right. That's all I need to know. Just tell me when to log in and when we're going to start. And that, you know, when we, as he hit me with them, I mean, yeah, I've heard them before from other places, but I yeah. didn't know that he was going to ask. I was scared whatever. for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was never nervous because I, you know, I'm coming from an honest place, you know, and I anytime like I see black women, know. I get I get nervous, man. <laughs> I saw it because like I saw, I, I saw the video and I saw three black women. I said, "Oh shit!" <laughs> I said, Fuck, and, and man, "To a certain did. extent, they did. To a certain extent, they absolutely yeah. did." And and you know the thing is is that you have to ask yourself the question if you're if you are one of the people who was really really upset, and if you're not now, you know that it might be the answer to the question. But you know, like, what is it that mm. you want? You know, do you just want to see somebody get dragged because that's, you know, the, that's just in, in, you know, the next sequence of events, you know, from Real Housewives, from BlurredCon.com or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> if you want that, you know, you're probably never going to be satisfied because, you know, we're not we're not dealing with a situation that was part of any chicanery or you know, where's the money or, or anything like that. This is just a really awkward mm. situation that happened that I as a con runner am responsible for dealing with in the moment and preventing in the future. And the anger and the discomfort and the concern that comes in the moment is reflexive and it's, it's, it's natural. Uh, but, you know, when you start looking at solutions, you know, you, you have to allow for that. And if you're still mad after you see the solutions, like you have to ask the question, like, okay, why are you here? Like, are you, is there right. any answer that would make you happy? And if the answer is no, then I won't, I won't burden you 
<laughs> with any more of my voice but you know it's just a hiccup mm. like, it's, you know now that i think about it if we were a little bigger that thing we did with the speed dating that shit would have got hate <laughs> you remember that like we didn't do the lgbt no, we, 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 we got hate off rip because we didn't <laughs> include because we didn't say it was like all inclusive we, we didn't include like non-binary people with the lgbtqia plus community like we didn't put that on the sheet we just said hey Speed dating. We just all we just thought all straight people was gonna come, <laughs> but you know, little did hopefully, you know. <laughs> little did I know that every every type of motherfucker was like, "Yo, we was waiting for this shit. We saw this shit in the program. We was waiting for it." I was like, "I didn't know this many motherfuckers was gonna come. We have to turn people away at the door." We was like, "Yo, this is our first time doing this. I don't know shit. I don't know what to do with my hands, Ricky Bobby. I don't know nothing." <laughs> so, hopefully, if oh, we do boy. it in twenty twenty two. We get like the big fucking room and then we get to actually like, you know, have everybody in there that wants to be in there. And then we get the inclusion that we want or do more than one speed dating panel. I don't know. We'll talk to you. I don't know. <laughs> we'll figure something out. <laughs> figure it out. So always do. Now, um, speaking of 2022, right? Um, the hallway cosplay contest pageant that you, uh, I guess you announced I, I don't I don't know if it was a preemptive announcement or you already had that plan to announce, but you announced that on a video, I think, at the end of July, I want to say. And was that always a plan to have that or did you feel the pressure from this thing and be like, hey, I got to do something? Well, it's a little bit of both um, because you have a challenge on both ends of the, of the challenge. Like I was saying, you know, we uh, looked at the con and said, okay, how many people can we comfortably accommodate in a cosplay contest? Mm. And the the number, the magic number that we get for registration is 50 for mm. prejudging and you know people walking across the stage and all that. I mean, cosplay contests, I did a Wizard World cosplay contest when I was cosplaying, and it was six hours. I was mm. yeah, now this contest didn't last, the audience didn't see six hours, but if you wanted to enter and you had to participate, it went from like 4 30 in the afternoon to eight o'clock at night, just yeah. in line, queuing up, getting judged, walk in, you know, no food, nowhere to sit. And so we are sensitive to the fact that people want to attend a convention and we want this to, you know, the contest to exist within this two hour block that we have set aside. Mm. Now, this year, like I said, we only had 19 entries. Right. So, you know, how do you spread or expand the footprint of the uh, the competition uh, to invite people into the process who don't want to spend? Yeah, it might be about two and a half hours of their Saturday participating in the contest, because, you know, one of the things that you always hear and, and it's funny because it, I'm like, yeah, I agree with you. They're like, oh, man, I was walking around. I saw. 20 cosplays that was better than so and so such. And now I get this every year. It's not unique to this year. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah I saw that cosplay get on stage. too. Exactly. I was like, I saw that cosplay too. I walked up to that individual. I told that individual, you got a dope cosplay. You should enter the contest. And they were like, eh. And then they went about their day. Oh, they was never in it? Force people. Huh? They, they no. was never in it? No, no. They're just talking about people walking around the con. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, you know, when they see a winner. There's people that walk around that, with dope ass cosplays, but they, they don't want to get on stage and they, want to enter the contest. Don't they just want yeah. to, they just, they just yeah. be chilling. And, and and I understand that. I understand that. And how do we showcase dope cosplay, even if they don't want to enter the formal contest? Because I think that we can still serve the mission of elevating and highlighting you know, the dopest cosplays that we see on a Saturday, which is the day of the contest, even without having these people going through the full prejudging and all the stuff to win maybe a formal set of prizes. So what mm. I said we was going to do is say, hey, we're going to have a, a hallway cosplay contest. And we might say, we might give 10 people 10 armbands a piece. And you say, all right, you're going to walk around. If you're in a place that's pivotal, you might even be a vendor. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like if you mm. see somebody in a dope cosplay, you are authorized to take these armbands, walk up to that person in the middle of the hall and be like, look, here, I want to give you this. You can go walk the stage. You know, you don't have to do any prejudging. You don't have to have your, 
you know, your cosplay taken apart. You don't have to have, have created or built or sewn 80% of it. Doesn't matter if you bought it. Doesn't matter if it's your cousins and you're just wearing it. <laughs> doesn't matter, if, you know, whatever. It's a dope cosplay and we want to see it on stage. Well, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to be in the video most likely. There's going to mm. be a photography aspect of it. So we have these opportunities to, to elevate what we see and what the cosplay, you know, quotient is at BlurCon. And then we'll have some prizes that might go a combination of crowd participation or, you know, maybe even the judges doing on site saying, OK, boom, we like the way you embodied that character. Maybe you did good voice characterization and body movement just as you walk the stage. You know, maybe mm. that that'll be something. And we just, you know, give you something, a little token of uh, of your accomplishment. And, you know, you get the little picture, boom, and and that's it. Took 30 minutes of your day to do it. Um, so that's really what we wanted to do. Unfortunately, uh, you know, there is no method <laughs> as it stands right now to just goad some of the best black cosplayers that we all know to get on that stage and showcase their skill and their talent in a formal contest. And uh, this is a way to do it. It's low maintenance. Uh, it's not that much work. Uh, it doesn't have a heavy load on the actual structure of the contest. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the day, there will be more blurred contestants or blurred cosplayers on a stage as a show. Because as an audience, when I go to a cosplay contest, I'm there to see dope cosplay. Mm -hmm. Right. People I might not have seen in the hall or, you know, I might have missed because I was in a panel. But, you know, boom. Oh, yeah. You was telling me about that, that Iron Man or you was telling me about that Deadpool or or, you know, that Inuyasha or whatever, whatever. Oh, there it is. Take a picture. Boom, boom, boom. You know, we want to have that at least both for the audience and for the cosplayers. So we're going to see how it runs this next year. Right. Hilton, I, I mean, this kind of goes without asking, but you've seen uh, Chappelle's show, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, what you just explained to me sounds like uh, I think it was in the first season when Dave Chappelle, he went around New York and said, hey, you had a great New York boom. <laughs> <laughs> he was just giving them ribbons and shit. We just added a stage. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's literally what it is. <laughs> hey, you have a um, great cosplay. There you go. <laughs> well, you know, it, I'm not reinventing the wheel. This is actually. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is how a lot of contests work. Uh, I. You may not have known me from my, my heavy cosplay days, but I was known for my Deadpool mm. uh, back in the day. And uh, I am not a crafter. You know, I'm not a sewer. You know, I'm not a, you know, molder. Uh, I'm a hack. You know, I put <laughs> together stuff yeah. and what I think is creative cosplay. But if you ask me how much of it that I actually make, like why well, I painted that, you know, and I, you know, did this, but I didn't make it, you know, wired that in, you know, put the speakers in so I, you can hear my voice. And uh, I went to MomoCon and entered the contest. And, you know, they asked me, so, well, we got a category, you know, do you want this? You just want to get up there and, and walk the stage and, and show your personality and your performance. Well, mm. there's a prize for that. And, you know, so they did the prejudging. I walked up on stage and it gave me this little bag. It was really cool. And I got my little chance to wave and take a picture with the, the cosplay judges and sat my butt down. And I was like, oh, that was pretty cool. Mm. And, and it was just that simple. And it didn't take too much of my life away. And I got a chance to, you know, kind of get up there and say something crazy. And uh, that was it. So mm. I think I think there's a way to make that work at BlurredCon so that we do get more highlights of the cosplay. And and yes, it will be very much like handing up uh, ribbons. <laughs> nice New York boobs. There you go. Nice, nice New York boobs. <laughs> that, that'll be kind of cool to have a cosplay to where... Um... You're having it to like a uh, best performance, like if they dressed up in a cosplay and they acted out on stage for like a good like minute or thirty seconds or something like that, just to see how it is. You just have different categories, exactly. like best best performance, best uh, style, the look and the things like that. Right, and these prizes don't have a whole lot of responsibility behind them. They may not be monetary. You know, they may be contrib contributed into a bag or a set of bags by the vendors, and then they mm -hmm. get you know prize sponsor consideration, you know, in the program or something like that. Uh, but it's just a way of acknowledging it. It's like I said, it's low maintenance. And again, you know, there are, are a lot of people who, you know, maybe they're not crafters and they're not sewers, but you know, some of my favorite cosplayers are people who bought their cosplays, but they perform the hell out of that character, you know? <laughs> um, like mm -hmm. my man, uh, uh, Eric, the smoke Moran, 
he does uh, uh, an amazing um, Skeletor. Yeah. You know, I mean, he didn't he didn't make the cosplay, but I mean, he's got that voice and that he man that, that shit. I, right. <laughs> I'm looking at this 350 pound ex marine, you know, former pro wrestler. You know, he puts his helmet on and he's sounding just like and I'm like, that voice is coming out of your head. But that <laughs> wow, like you really are Skeletor. But the way a formal cosplay contest works now, he might not win you know, on, on that alone. But yeah. if we did like a hallway cosplay contest, like somebody could walk up and go, boom, we need you to get there and show that voice and show that performance and, you know, get some acknowledgement for it. So. Mm. I think, I think it would be cool to, uh, cause you know, they have lightsaber duels sometimes and they have them as cos- yes. cosplays. Sometimes yes. I, I go to the cosplay and I see people dressed Listen, up as certain characters. Stop, man, I gotta say this. I gotta say it. <laughs> gotta say it. Hey, like, well, if you do that, that shit, if niggas heard on this show, I will hear shit. <laughs> what, the Duel Awards? It'll be a Duel Awards. It'll be like Batman yeah. versus fucking uh, hey, uh, hey, Black they Panther. Do all this shit. And they, they do shit with like DJs and music. Choreography and shit, and shit like that. Like, if you have a choreography like <laughs> fucking performance or some shit, are you okay with it? Well, I check, man. Come on, man. Oh, yeah. Look, he already setting the predicate for the 2022 scandal. Like, that lightsaber duel with the DJs. You know what? That was all. I'm not, I love BlurCon so much that I wouldn't even ask y'all for a check. I just want to be a part of the fucking festivities and shit. But I've seen that too many times where niggas are still some idea because they like gave like a fucking skeleton of an idea. Yeah, and they were like, huh, never thought of that. What am I going to do? I'm going to flesh this motherfucking skeleton, <laughs> and I'm going to just do it like I thought of it. <laughs> well, see, that's why I don't talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I kept listen. I kept BlurredCon under wraps for two years. I From the first day I said I got mad like, ideas. It's just if you're going to use First time I was just like, let me just drip up. Drip up. <laughs> uh, don't say the name because somebody already be at the patent office talking about, oh, yeah, you throwing talking- out a BlurredCon application too? All right, cool. <laughs> We about to be exactly. (laughs) (laughs) This is why, look, this is why we can't, you know, as a people. And I, you know, I, I think about this all the time, a great opportunity comes to you or is on its way to you. And you're so enthusiastic that you put a post on social media saying something amazing is coming. Can't say nothing yet, but I'll wait till tomorrow. That part that, that can't say nothing yet. He's talking to black people. (laughs) <laughs> let y'all mess this up for me i'm gonna wait till the contract is signed because i know y'all gonna mess it up if y'all find out I'm for a job right i'm applying for this job and oh i know somebody work at target too and you know blah, 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 blah. you ain't getting no manager position we got a weird phone call before we said something about your past and you know it's the same way with with these creative ideas you just gotta run right. and just make it happen like, yo, it's, yo, how like I got mad ideas. Yo, just you know, work with me. <laughs> now, um, I guess what precautions are gonna be set in place come twenty twenty two as like a preemptive strike to stop any bullshit that may occur. That's a big, big category Ooh. bullshit. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean. Although we're like a month removed from twenty twenty one's blur con, you got a whole eleven months until uh, next year's. But like has the team discussed anything is there anything that you know is concrete now is there anything that you're you know thinking about that's like 80 percent there that we're gonna do like is there anything like somewhat solid or solid well it's just really interesting because you know with five months of planning and what could have very well been a hugely diminished crowd we actually ended up doing more and expanding BlurredCon in 2021 uh, than we would have normally done in you know any other year uh, before. Mm. We had the the third stage. It was a whole concert going on, two days, you know, almost 12 and a half hours per day mm. concert running outside in a parking lot, act after act, DJ after DJ, you know, LED wall. I mean, you've seen the video. It was an amazing stage. Uh, so that's going to happen again, uh, you know, for 2022. Uh, you know, we're going to do a lot of stuff that's thematic. I mean, I'm really, really excited <laughs> about the homecoming uh, theme. You know, yes, I'm, I'm a product of HBCU and that experience is almost inherent with homecoming to the point where 
the the black people who went to PWIs or anyone who went to a PWI, they look at the the title homecoming and they kind of cock their head to the side. So what exactly <laughs> is happening next year? Everybody who went to or is familiar with the black college experience is like, oh shit, oh man, it's gonna be this, it's gonna be that, because they know you know, what that connotation is. They're going to have an all white drum line or some shit. Band or... <laughs> First of all, white bands don't have a drum line. <laughs> that, that's you remember that they... one dude on fucking, what's name on drum line that was beating that bass and shit, beating that drum? <laughs> oh, you're talking about Big Percy. Big, yeah. Every band got Big Percy. You got to have it. Uh, but yeah, like doing, doing uh, you know, a band, maybe uh, some type of small limited parade, depending on what kind of route we can get across the city. Um, you know, maybe doing uh, some step teams come through and and do a little something uh, from local colleges. And it really depends on as well, because it's summertime, everybody's scattered to the winds. Yeah. So trying to do those negotiations now and figuring out what we can bring about uh, is going to be important. Uh, this also may uh, color some of the uh, content as far as what panels are submitted. Mm. Uh, we're also looking at maybe some of the guests you know, that we might bring about that are thematically within in that that theme or the cosplay, you know, that we might be looking at. There's a there's a lot of ways of inserting, hmm. which is really the, the art behind BlurredCon is each year we have to find a way to take the black experience and weave it into the nerd experience and make hmm. it look seamless. Because if it's just nerd, 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 black, you know, it's going to be weird, you know, hmm. and, and I I. It, it's a very, very fine line between black nerd and black excellence. You mm. know, we could very easily, it would be the easiest thing in the world to make black blurred con a black excellence festival, where right. anybody black who's doing anything could come. But I'm like, we got to stay in the nerd lane in order for blurred con to be blurred con. So the guests that we bring, you know, like if they don't have a voiceover for an animated character or they're not doing something sci-fi or at least horror you know, we, you know, I can't really do a whole lot with you because it's not a pop, pop culture con in that way. Mm. Um, so trying to weave that in, like with the barbershop, you know, there was some amazing uh, uh, responses we got to the barbershop, both in 2019 and in 2021. Mm. Uh, we partnered with this group called uh, Clipped Art. And this brother is out on the West Coast and he's got an app and he sends through his foundation black barbers to white colleges <laughs> to give the black students at those white colleges edges. She's giving, she giving they, Chad a fade. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, well, I mean, Chad may want one, but he's really there to give free haircuts to the black students at the white colleges. Because uh, yeah. if you're in Ames, Iowa, you know, <laughs> yeah. where's your black barber, you know, and you're running around with your ears all fluffy trying to figure out what to do. Shit, sis, sis, some of those are Yukon. <laughs> no, hey, I, he might already be with it, but Shit. he actually worked with us and we got the two barbers we got. One of them was from Colorado, flew in, one flew from Arizona. And I mean, that dude, those dudes were doing some serious work. So we're going to be partnering with them to expand that next year. Um, and then again, you know, musical guests, you know, I got, I want to get a go-go band this year. Weren't really able to make it happen last year, but really, really, really want a go-go band. And everybody I'm talking to about it, I'm like, I got to have a horn section. As long as I got a horn section, I don't mm -hmm. care. As long as I see right. a horn section, I don't care. You know, I just, just, we got to make that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of what you saw in 2021 will be replicated in 2022. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of nuance or, or things that we're going to add to it structurally beyond that. I mean, I think we've cemented the uh, spades tournament. Uh, mm -hmm. is, you know, we figured out a way to make that work because that was bigger than the, the, the room that it was in in 2019. And now we got a way to uh, to make it pop and make it as big and as expansive as we need it to be. Shit. Uh, you talking yes. about some black shit? This some black, mm -hmm. like, you're like, yeah, I love black. the black, I love like the blackity black shit that you implement though. <laughs> like the <laughs> like the spade shit. Like, I, like when I saw that shit, I was like, yo, I'm gonna shed a fucking tear, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because, you know, there is a line because there are some people who get like, like, oh man, that's too black. I don't think they can get it. And I'm like, <laughs> even black. if they don't, that's because they worried about white people. We ain't, we ain't worried about white no, people this weekend. No, no, it's not white people. It's black people who don't know how to play spades because you know how. Ah, uh, yeah, Once yeah, you're yeah. 15, oh, it's too many of those. Nobody's gonna teach you how to play spades in Black America. 
You can't walk up on those things. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna, they gonna be like, you don't get up. Where's your, where's your daddy? You don't have a daddy. Where's your uncle? I'm not your family. I'm not teaching you to play space. Right. Nobody want to teach you to play space. So that part of the black community, and remember, it's a spectrum. You know, you got the the black community that have had the black experience and are products of it. And then there are the people who are black who right. have not had the black experience right? because they're from Sanford, North Carolina or, you know, Booganook, South right. Carolina or whatever, whatever. And they're coming yeah. to get it, you know, and I think Holy it's similar shit, when you see who's coming to the HBCUs. <laughs> a lot of the black people to go to HBCUs will tell you, I grew up in a white neighborhood. You know, I've lived in this area. All my friends are white. I went to all these white schools and. I was like, you know, I really need to connect with my people. So I'm going to an HBCU so I can connect with my culture. Connect with my, my people. people. Exactly. And those folks are, are, I think there's a lot of them that are using BlurredCon as kind of that same way. Like, wait, you know, I don't have like a black environment for my nerds. Cousin! <laughs> and then you come in and then it's like, I mean, look, y'all were there in 2019. Yeah. Right. And you saw the faces of at least one or two people who obviously had never been in a room. Lost five in the sauce. <laughs> what? Like, I've never seen this many black people anywhere <laughs> ever for any reason. And they just kind of like frozen in an awe, just kind of looking around and don't really know what to do. Yeah, those are the ones that I'm like, okay, space tournament, that might go over some people's head. But right. it ended up being a really positive experience. What I would add is maybe we have a panel on Friday if the space tournament's on Saturday. We have a panel that teaches the fundamental of spades for people who don't Ooh. know it. Right? Huh? That's, da- right? that's dangerous. Huh? Right? I don't know. You, you might like, be saying we, we just gonna go through. We just gonna we just gonna go through to through the fundamentals of bid whist, the fundamentals. <laughs> What's a cut book? Be, How do you bid? Uh, What's board? What's a Boston? Yeah, board. That might be a Boston. setup. That might that might be a setup because some you know somebody like, oh I, I watch this fundamental and get in there with somebody who really plays spades. And then they be like, yo, you got to get off the table right now. <laughs> <laughs> I almost got in a fist fight with my frat brother in Atlanta over a spade See? game, man. I thought he, he was going to kill me in the parking lot because I cut See? it. You, People... Wait, why did you tell me you had that book? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, we, we, cut, we, no, we, we cut my diamonds, nigga. I'm like, dude, that was an hour ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I fuck that. that shit. Everybody you remember that board. shit. <laughs> you watching the board. I was cutting diamonds the whole time. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> nah, but y'all, like, it's kind of like a, like a rite of passage. Like, you know, if you get, like, if somebody cuts your books, you got to fight about it after. But it's like, yeah, we're going to be boys again, though. Like, it's, it's all good, but it's just like, I got to punch in your face, though. Oh, uh, yeah. Some people might <laughs> we not got be boys after. We got to nah, nah, If you're really friends, maybe we give them, maybe we give them, maybe we give them the beginner stickers. Like, you <laughs> know, like, stickers. Oh, like a student driver sticker they put on a car. Uh. Now, yeah, you, you, you got to have, have like student, the beginner, student, intermediate, and advanced. <laughs> now, you do so that, you know, that be, that somebody that come up and say, hey, you, you, you know, can I play with you? Be like, nah. Mm. nah. Let me see your wristband. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah they're only in base form. Yeah, if you if you got a green wristband, <laughs> sit that fucking beginner table. Don't talk to me. Hey, okay? yeah. if you got a yellow, I might Maybe. can fuck with you. Red, but you know what? Advanced up. players. People snuck in, and we didn't even think about, about it this way, but because it, it wasn't intended to be this way, but Uno is a black game. Oh yeah, in ways yeah, yeah. that that we're really just. I mean, it wasn't designed as that, mm-hmm. but that's our. That's game. only a black game because we cheat. It's not cheating. If those we, are the rules. No, we love hitting <laughs> my nigga. We'll we throw with draw four. <laughs> yo, we'll throw eight draw fours on a motherfucker and be like, yo, nah, ain't no rule that say that, <laughs> nigga. Come on, we eight. How the fuck you? It, how, you, know you know the rules. <laughs> you know the rules at eight. As I yell, Uno. <laughs> yes. Now you take the here. Take this whole deck. Or you ain't say Uno on your last card. You got to pick up some more. Like what the fuck? Like I ain't even put the card down yet. <laughs> I hate that. I so they were playing both at the tournament. So we can oh. probably include that too. So we're, anyway, we're, yeah, that's the whole idea. Yes. So at the same just time, bringing bringing in as much blackness into the nerd space as we can, and uh, you know, so that it is unique. I mean, there's really. Uh, you know, people ask me, like, what's the secret sauce for BlurredCon? And I'm like, it's really, it's the people the and it is what we can do <laughs> that other cons can't do. You know, I mean, you don't have the institutional DNA at an all-white convention to do a spades tournament without people getting mad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, no, that's what it's really, it's almost literally what it's called. 
And, <sighs> you know, if you were to do it, like you, people might get offended. Like black people, if you did a space tournament at your local, just regular con run by Joe Blow White Guy, like y'all would be like, uh, I'm not, he's fucking you know, white people pandering. It's, yeah, like it's pandering. I'm uncomfortable. Not sure what's, you know. You got the Henny on the side. Because the we're what's in the space on? that we're in. <laughs> Yeah, ain't we nobody cussing. Ain't, no, ain't no henny on the side. Ain't no fight. Ain't nobody uncle fucking on the on the, on on the, the grill. grill. <laughs> when the when the when the barbecue truck got pulled up for the first time in 2018, and I saw he was wearing white socks with Crocs, <laughs> and he was making his barbecue sauce out of he had a big old tray like a tub of cans <laughs> of Coke 45, and I thought. I thought he was selling Coke 45 and I was like, <laughs> I wanted one. I would never go into a, you know, a, a liquor store and buy a Coke 45. As an adult, but I'm like, Hey, as hot as a Coke 45. And he's like, nah, man, that's for my barbecue sauce. I said, oh, I shit. I'm like, if you're making your barbecue sauce out of Coke 45, yeah. I'm right. I'm so you ain't gotta tell me nothing else. I'll be back. Let me know when the grill is fired up. Oh, he's man. been there every year since. I mean, you know, and even with the with the food truck rally, you know, we we curate as many like there's only two trucks that are not black owned out of the 16 that come to BlurCon. And hmm. one is a pizza truck and one is uh, the noodle truck. We're just not doing noodles yet. Hmm. When, when we get to doing noodles, I'll call, you know, the brother. But right now we ain't got hmm. nobody doing it. We ain't got nobody doing it. And so people are like even looking at these black owned trucks, you know, you got the Jamaican vegan truck and you got the barbecue truck and you got the slider truck and the ice cream truck and you know, we're all doing it. You know, but uh, you know, where however we can insert it in, you know, every year we want to do something new and that's how we do it. Yo, I I ain't going to hold you. Them food trucks is where niggas call a lot of action at the food trucks. <laughs> like y'all be going to these parties and all that. Chicks get hungry. <laughs> and it was a lot of action caught up in food trucks, man. <laughs> food is a universal aphrodisiac. You can <laughs> you can get like girl, you want a rib? Like that's, that sound biblical. I think I think Adam said that one, one rib. Uh, <laughs> let's give it one rib. Hold on, you know. But yeah, I mean it's like we had the opportunity. Hey baby, can I buy you a fish sandwich? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know, like being able to eat and, and you people take that for granted. Sometimes there's a lot of cons that are subject to, you know, whoever signed a contract with the convention center mm. and you, you go to the convention center and it's like, you know, it's the same four sandwich places, you know, and you're kind of like, Oh, okay, whatever, whatever. But then if you had the opportunity to bring 16 food trucks <laughs> run around the clock for three days, right. You know, people don't think about food. Like the food is an experience. The music is an experience. Right. That people are taking the memories from this time that they're spending at the con. I mean, you look, if you take a moment in time and you attach an emotion to it, people will never forget it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that might be food. That's an emotional connection. Like, oh, I heard Frankie Beverly Mays came over to DJ speaker while I bit into this rib (laughs) and I saw my ancestors (laughs) and a pretty woman dressed in a cosplay (laughs) came over and said my name and. Boom, you will be in your graves thinking about that memory. Like, yeah, that was a good day. Right. Yeah. And all we got to do is get out of the way and let y'all have those moments and not try to <laughs> overcook it. Yeah, the, right, like right. like the ones who never went there, they they bought in some 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 freshly made chicken and shit like that. <sighs> Remember who you are. You like <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right, now I guess I belong here. <laughs> that nigga said you buy us some chicken, you move faster. <laughs> <laughs> remember, <laughs> remember who you are. <laughs> Say we bite into the chicken into the clouds roll. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, you get one of the fucking that's so Raven flashbacks and shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny, but that's actually the experience I had with the barbecue truck. I can't actually. I I talked to the to my man uh, Stackhouse. I was like, dude. I can't have y'all barbecue because the itis kick. I gotta be, <laughs> yeah. you know, stuff happens. Fact, yeah. so I, if I'm if I'm eating this because I'm eating, like when I'm eating, I'm hungry, hungry, you know. And if I go into my room and I'm just trying to eat in peace because I can't eat in peace because everybody needs me for something. If the sun can see me, everybody can. So I'll get into right. my room, and then the itis kick in, and then I go to sleep. You know, I, <laughs> Rome will burn while I'm knocked out. I can't do that. So I gotta put that stuff in the fridge and hit it on on Tuesday. 
you know, I'll buy it today, but I'm going to hit it on Tuesday because it's, you know, I just can't do it. Right. Really, really, really. really. <laughs> but yeah, 2022 is going to be special. I think this is going to be, I really think we're going to be in a better place as far as COVID. I do not anticipate us having any COVID restrictions as far as the, you know, mandates and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, don't put anything past America and Americans to, you know, screw up a good trajectory, but I, you know, right. I think next summer we'll have this under control um, and we can kind of get back to normal, you know, and um, this is, there are, there are a lot of cons that are not coming back and we're starting to see it. Like there's people looking on the account, like didn't, you know, X, Y, Z con used to be here on the account. Like, no, nah, they, yeah. they're not yeah, coming they... back. Cause you know, and uh, yeah. So I think we're going to be in a really good place and we're going to put on a really good show. And like I said, we take this stuff in stride. You know, this this is uh, our job. You know, you, you mm. take on a responsibility. If you create a convention, it's not going to ever be perfect. It's something that you're constantly perfecting. And, you know, you try to do it in as constructive and as in as thoughtful a way as you possibly can. And, you know, like I said, there's there's always going to be half of the community that's skeptical about a con like Blurred Con. It's just this is how, how we're built. And uh, but 50 percent is a lot. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you saw you saw you saw what we did on year three. Like we forget, 2019 is was year three. Mm -hmm. We had two years of experience running the con before 2019. That was a two year old convention happening in its third year, the year you saw it. And if we get any kind of longevity, and if we're able to have any type of growth that is commensurate with any other convention, you know, we will end up being that 10 or 15 thousand person convention before we get, you know, past 2026. And so we're always going to have to be growing and expanding and, and changing, you know, because stuff we're doing today might not fit two years from now. There's stuff mm -hmm. we were doing in year one that don't fit this year. Uh, and, you know, like I said, you know, it there's there are people, like I talk about the crazy folks on the far, 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 far fringes of it, but the funny ones are the ones that talk about us every year and then they come back every year. And I see them at the con <laughs> having a ball shaking ass at the parties and you know just high-fiving everybody having a great time and i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> let me let me that's let me tell the, you that's the cycle that's the cycle blur 2019 changed my life <laughs> you know you didn't got me some action i ain't gonna speak for anybody else you got me some action i got you action Got me. You created this con. <laughs> oh, oh! I thought you like that. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, but you, you so created this con. I went there. Shit transpired, <laughs> and three. then you know. Appreciate you, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, <laughs> some things I cannot take credit for. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if you want to or not. I'm giving you the credit, though. <laughs> Without you, I listen. This you know what? Never mind. Top three, top five, yeah. No top three. Oh, oh, oh that's what it was. Yo, you two niggas. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. Told y'all shit. Told y'all we'll shit. We'll talk offline. We'll talk offline. We'll talk offline. Yeah, we'll talk offline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> yo, if y'all haven't heard our fucking blur account recap of 2019, you can go ahead and check that out now. <sighs> so, um. Now, I went to go uh, try to um, book my ticket for 2022. And is the hotel still giving discounts or no? Yeah, yeah. If there's they still are? rooms available, the room block uh, is posted in the Facebook group. I don't know if it's on the page yet. We're doing a revamp and moving our server uh, at the moment. So uh, I don't know if it's on the page yet. But if you go to the Facebook page where we keep it pretty much purely uh, blurred kind of information, it's mm. like maybe three or four posts down where the link is. Uh, okay. And I think that's probably 109 or $112 a night is the room rate. Mm. Also, anybody out there who's thinking, who's on the fence about getting a VIP, we got about 50 VIP badges left. Like they, there's like 150 of them have already been sold. It might be more uh, checked a day ago, but people are really buying the VIPs. And there's, I got, I, the, last year was the first time that we really, really leaned into VIP. Mm. And I'm telling you, 
it, there's only so many we can do. I caught so much flack, not flack, but people were really disappointed because they were on the fence and they were waiting for their cousin and they went mm -hmm. and then once they sold out, they were like, Hilton, can you get me one more? And I'm like, like the tickets that are, are in a, you know, they're online at a, at a certain number and I can't like go back and change it. Mm. Uh, so get that because it's going to be off the hook this year. We're doing some really innovative stuff. Uh, I don't know if you heard, but we did some really cool stuff with uh, quiet ordinance technology based out of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. It's those uh, silent disco uh, earphones. Are you guys familiar with those? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. The little three. neon joints and you could set the, uh, Music exactly. to what you want and party. Exactly. Was what we did was room. we put so two. Those just niggas bouncing around, but you don't know what they bouncing to. <laughs> Actually, these were a little more mundane. We give it to people uh, in the VIP, got them for free. And what we did was is that we put microphones in two of the main uh, panel rooms. And so even if you weren't in the room for the panel, you could turn to channel one or two. Mm. And there would be two panels that you could listen in on, even if you didn't get into the room. And so people really took advantage of that. There was a third one that we were piping in and from uh, from the main ballroom in. And uh, we're going to expand that and do some more things with it uh, musically and, uh, you know, content wise for 2022. Mm. Uh, we're definitely going to have, you know, the uh, dedicated uh, registration uh, for VIP, so you're not going to be standing in line because we did have more of a line this year than I've ever seen at BlurCon. It was around the corner, up the street. You know, it was crazy, like on Friday. I'd never seen it like that. But that's the enthusiasm of the people, and we're you know we're used to it now. Um, and then uh, you know the parties, you know, are going to be able to hook. We, we, this is what what we did this year that was revolutionary. We did a late night party called a pre dawn. And we went from 11 o'clock to five in the morning on Saturday, mm. you know, so, so, you know, I normally a hotel party in any hotel lights on one 30, everybody out Day the the fuck room mm -hmm. by two. I was like, nah, uh, this people got too much energy. And I told the <laughs> hotel, it's like, if y'all want people screaming and running around and acting crazy in the middle of the night, that's how you do it. I mm. said, but if you let them in that room and you let them DJ spin, we can have them crawling on their bellies out of there. They'll be so tired. <laughs> They're not going, they don't want to do nothing after that. And then y'all can have a quiet place <laughs> and everything. And they were like, okay, let's do it. So we had, we had a seven, it was roughly seven hours with the party, with the mm -hmm. concert that we had with Afro Coco Pop. So there's a lot of renovated, I mean, uh, uh, revolutionary stuff that we did that we're going to repeat and, uh, and expand on. So just keep an eye out for the uh, announcements and, uh, you know, hopefully the guest list will be able to expand. You know, once COVID starts clearing up, you know, we got some ideas of some folks we want to reach out to, but, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll see what the fall holds. Okay. So right after this episode is over, I'm going to go ahead and book my ticket and uh, hopefully, you know, we can get to 2022 without any crazy viruses and fucking COVID, whatever the fucks. And we can just go there and have a good black ass time. Get with... your shot, man. Just get it. Just I'm going to get the Illuminati. shot. I know it's the Illuminati. <laughs> Just let them have it, man. I know they, it's the nanites. Just take the nanites, man. Yeah, that, I want the look, nanites, man. Just, just look, look, we going. This is this. Look, I know in thirty years is, we're gonna be the Borg, and they're gonna face <laughs> back to to this shot. But but for now, <laughs> let's just <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Now, my my whole thing is that stop calling it a vaccine when it's just a shot. It's not it's not a cure all. It's just a fucking shot to make sure you don't fucking get the worst of the symptoms. Stop calling it a vaccine. Vaccines cure shit. Just don't cure shit. No, a cure cures stuff. Vaccines <laughs> prevent you from doing exactly what they do. That's what it's like it keeps you from dying. That's all yeah. it is. That's all it is. So when you get sick, you know, you get a little sniffle, a little red eye. Your homeboys <laughs> can still hang with you. Be like, oh, look at you got a little red eye, man. Look at you. Yeah. COVID, COVID ass, you know, but just joking. You can joke <laughs> with COVID when you get the shot. Now, if you don't have the shot and you get COVID, people be like, oh man, you got your affairs in order. Yeah. You know, Zoom and, like you don't want that. Legal <laughs> I don't want I don't want to lose nobody else to COVID. I'm telling you, I'm 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 mad at COVID. I'm I yeah, just, man. It's ruined my life. You know, it's you know, it's got air. It just it's the it's the worst thing that I could have ever met. A comet could have hit Earth. And done less damage to the world, killed less people than this damn virus. I mean, <laughs> depending on where it hit, obviously, but still, 
I'm like, dang, it messed up my con world. I didn't know all my friends went to cons. Yeah. I didn't know that all the people that I consider friends, I would see them at cons. I thought I had all these friends that lived around me and mm-hmm. ain't nobody living there. I'm like, oh, wait, what's wait, where y'all at, man? Oh, New Jersey. Damn, I thought you lived in them. Oh, you know, because you see him at Magfest and you see him at Otakon, you see him right. at Oricon, and you see him at, you know, Katsukon. He's like, oh, yeah, Maryland, DC, Maryland, DC. Where you at? Boston, Boston. Damn. Hmm. I'm not going to Boston. I'm going to fucking racist ass Boston. <laughs> I'm not going to Boston. Yeah, I'm going to racist ass Boston. It's racist shit. I'm going there. back to Boston. Yeah, you know, so, yeah, I miss it. I miss the world. So, Hopefully yes. we'll we'll be we'll be safe and back in in business soon. Yeah, so hopefully you'll see all three of us at uh Blur Con 2022. Um, Hill, and is there anything else that we didn't cover that you want to say? Is there any you know feeling that you want to put out there? Any statement you want to put out there? Anything that you want to say in closing? You know the the thing that I've always wanted for Blur Con is what has shown to be true uh, time and time again. Even when we get stuff wrong. I want people to look at BlurCon as their con. And if the solution, you know, requires your input as a community or requires your volunteerism as a community uh, or just, you know, you communicating with us, that's what I'm looking for. You know, there's there are cons out there that people look at as this administrative function that they can they could give a damn about. And I mm. think a lot of the anger and even a lot of the hurt uh, that some people felt about this last issue was because they love BlurCon and they love the Blur community. Believe and even if if that turned into anger toward us, you know, it still comes from a place of love. You know, and I've always wanted that for BlurCon, and I am convinced that if we continue to have dialogue and realistic expectations of one another, from the management and the leadership to the attendees and the participants. You know, there's really nothing that we can't get past. And, you know, like I said, I'm just a nerd like everybody else here, you know, and my black experience is projected onto the convention and uh, the community shapes the direction that the con goes for the most part. You know, I don't do anything that that the con that the con community doesn't enjoy that doesn't make any sense. So your continued feedback, your continued engagement is always going to be beneficial to the convention, even when you're mad even when you, you know, you're kicking stuff over at your house or cussing us out in, in private chats or whatever, you know, that's still okay as long as at the end of the day, we're all working toward a better convention and the betterment of the community, you mm. know, because like I said, there's a lot of folks out there who may not be bold enough to reach out to me directly. I understand that, you know, people are very non-confrontational in the blurred community and that's fine. Mm. But, yeah, not me. You know, yeah, no. an email, you know, a message, you know, uh, hit the questionnaire, it's anonymous, you know, and just put your put your suggestions out there at the end of each convention. That's what we need. That is support of black business is even mm. when we get it wrong, or even if you see something that needs drastic and immediate correction, that we're all on board to make that happen. Because 2022 is going to be so dope just because of us having to go through some of the things that we had to go through to get 2021 right. And these types of discussions, this type of dialogue is important. So I really appreciate you guys inviting me on. I know it was, it was, there was some fits and starts with the scheduling and stuff, but I was like, no. It's all good. As many opportunities as we have to talk about these issues and talk about this collective project that we're kind of on, which the con is, there's no way we can lose. There's no way that we can not have a fun weekend and uh, have stories that my man here is going to talk about as soon as we get off. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you gave them niggas the interview first, but shout out to them. Appreciate them. For, uh, get, for getting all the other questions out the way, because I ain't have three hours to just sit here and ask mm-hmm. you all that shit. But, you know, you answer most of it. I I think from what I've heard, heard from them, head nurse in charge, and what we ask here, I think you pretty much covered everything. If you revisit this thing again when it comes to i guess like there's a whole i guess case with like not sexual assault but like revenge point whatever the fuck the contests whatever the case may be i think you pretty much covered all bases now all we have to look for is 2022 uh my nigga appreciate you for being as black as you are throwing throwing throw in the <laughs> blackest uh, com- convention that weekend that i can think of um you know 
coming up on BlurCon 2022, we'll probably talk to you again to see what, what you implement or initiatives that you have or if anything's changed, you know, whatever the case may be. Probably talk to you uh, then, but... Come back down here, man. Look, we got cons that's going to happen this year. And if y'all feel safe enough to come out, man, is come. I will be at other cons. I will be find somebody to go. I don't like going places by myself. I got to find somebody to go. Who these cats? Who these cats? I don't need a house. You got a low jack on your on your. So, you got a low jack. The hurting fat nigga, right? The one, the one, the fat nigga that's hurting, right? Yeah. He don't really like people. I don't really fault him for that. I don't really push it. Boom. This nigga, well, this nigga, <laughs> I don't know what he be doing. He be tired of a whole bunch of other shit. I don't be asking no questions. I'd be like, yo, you want to do it? He said yes or no. Either he would or he ain't. Okay, cool. I got to find other people to go with. I mean, I can go down there and make friends probably, but it's just like, I don't like initially going down there by myself. I don't go nowhere by myself. You I said what, have, Hesh? I have, a cor- no. I have a choreographed group of people that's going to be there with me or meet me there. So I'm with you. Uh, I'm comfortable in crowds, but you know, I got a mission, so I got to have my people with me. Right. So if you go, look, if you go to a con, Blurry Con's going to be there. I'm going to be there. You'll have people there. And, you know, the con, we bring a little bit of Blurry Con with us everywhere we go. Mm. So, you know, we'll be going to cons this fall. I'll be at Anime NYC. I'll be at New York Comic Con. I'll be at Neko Con. I'll probably be down at, Mo- at Momo's uh, Winter Fest uh, mm. in December, too uh afro punk uh in uh september down in atlanta you know mm. so i i'm out here promoting blur con and and doing partnerships and stuff so if y'all look at something and you hear that we're gonna be there man y'all family come on through pull this up is, i mean look this is- everybody pull up you can hear the sound of my voice pull up he's <laughs> gonna be there you can ask him maybe anything that we didn't ask anything you want to ask him oh you put me to work <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, we got we got a pretty solid like fan base, dog. I don't know who's gonna pull up the wood, though. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, you know, as oh, always, man. you know, Hillen, I appreciate you. Thank you for coming on and expressing everything. I think you answered everything that I had to ask. So, um, I guess until you know, twenty twenty two, I guess you know, we'll holler at you, man. Twenty twenty two. All right, man. And that was our interview with him, George. Shout out to Hilton. Uh, gave us a lot of insight on what. Stop hmm? blaming that nigga for the shit. <laughs> he didn't do it. No. Hey. All right. He he got nothing to do with the judges acting on their own accord, and I got nothing to do with them. He don't deserve that smoke. Deserve that smoke for the judges. Her, Hilton is not and He put a space tournament in the goddamn goddamn. <laughs> he is not anti-black. Okay? So reserve your judgment. Mm. I like yeah. that shirt, Bobby. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, t- uh, not topics. Uh, picks. Yeah. What we got for picks, man? Cash. You ain't watch shit. Uh, that what kind of uh, what 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 kind of wood was that oak dresser drawer that you was moving? Marble. Marble. Oh, they niggas. You used to move with some fancy niggas. <laughs> nah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Nah. Uh. So. Um. It was called Eden's Zero. It's on Netflix. It's from the it's an anime from the creator of Fairy Tale, and it's basically a Fairy Tale, but in like space because <laughs> like they have like a lot of the same. It's like it looks exactly the same as that shit. They even got the same as Happy the Cat. It's all the same Happy shit. The so like, yeah, this is this is just Fairy Tale, but in space. Man, like, yeah. Um, I watched like half an episode mm-hmm. earlier, and uh, shit, bitch. Um. Mm-hmm. No, I said something out loud. I didn't mean to say. Uh, <laughs> we know it happens to all of us. Uh, but it's recorded. Uh, <laughs> anyway, watch that. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, Bob a lot, man. <laughs> yeah. What you got for what you got for picks, man? Uh, um, it's on Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. Uh, The Witcher: Nightmare of the Wolf. That shit is crazy. Um, it, it's. I'm thinking it's made by the same people who made Castlevania because they they kind of got the same style because motherfuckers' faces be getting ripped the fuck off. 
and it's it's like a it's it's sort of like a prequel. Uh, Gerald is in it, but he's a kid. But it's not about him; it's about his mentor. Yeah, his teacher, I think, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was watching that. Yeah, that was kind of good. You might get mad at the beginning though, because uh, black people. <laughs> Toss a toy to a nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Throw him through Did they kill him? Like, you either, you either talking oh, to us or you talking to them. Either they kill some black people or they kill some white women. They, no, they, they they kill some niggas, but they 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 killed okay. them, killed them. Like they, oh, they like slave castrated them, <laughs> massacred, <laughs> oh, <laughs> fucking yeah. massacred. Oh, so just white people shit. Way worse than they than they say it was. So just white people shit. So everyday white people shit. Everyday white people shit. Okay. See that shit? I was like, whoa, the kids? Not the kids. <laughs> Not the babies, man. <laughs> Even the niggas. <laughs> but don't worry, the kids got this too. They they was all inclusive. Like some white kids got it too. So <laughs> the niggas in the swamp. <laughs> like, oh shit, what the fuck? They was getting fucked up. I'd review that. No, that shit Bobby, was crazy. Stop. I'm sorry. Stop. Stop. Shit was crazy, man. <laughs> okay. I thought we had an okay episode until Nigglets. <laughs> Nigglets. I'm sorry, we've been recording for the five Nicholas. hours, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nah, this podcast is gonna be long as fuck. She's gonna be like almost four long hours. As uh... fuck. Long hey, as fuck. Hey, yeah, hey, 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 hey! All you motherfuckers that listen to this shit for free, shut up. Shut, 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 shut the fuck up. It's gonna shut take up. me. It's gonna take me like two days to upload this shit to fucking YouTube. <laughs> Just make sure you cut out the part, man. I don't what want part? to, but I am. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, cut that, part out, yeah, cut that I'll shit cut it out. I'm saving that. The one that somewhere. Say, do what you gotta do with it. Do what you gotta do, dog. Oh, just cut it out. I mean, that was an interesting part. conversation, though. It was real shit. It was. But I understand that. But yeah, I understand. I ain't saying I would have killed him, but I understand. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my pick is uh, the Miss Pat show. That like, shit. It? It's really good. Yo. I knew it would. Damn, I gotta watch it though. I don't. I don't know how you are gonna get your hands on it, dog. I fucked around, got drunk, and ordered BT Plus. <laughs> <laughs> that, yo. <laughs> That's why I can fuck around and get drunk and order. Nah, it's like yo, cause like I was like I had watched like five episodes of their Sopranos that day. I was like, yo, I'm tired of y'all calling people niggas, yo. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Mulian. Mulian, that's what he said. I need some black shit. I was like, you know what? Mulian. How much is BT plus oh. shit called, man? Doop a doop a doop a doop. Free trial joint. Let me see this. What this Miss Pat show hitting for? That shit. Oh, funny. Wow. It's um, it's the realest black show I've seen. It's it's, it's the most believable black sitcom I've seen. Since Martin, oh damn! Mm. All right, it's okay. It's Martin, but flagrant. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so what do I want to compare it to? So it's not the first season of Martin Funny. It's on the cusp with the rat, and it and it it's like <laughs> it's like my wife and kids, but flagrant. Oh, okay, my wife and kids, but flagrant as <laughs> <and> shit. <laughs> that shit was funny. Your Bobby, that ain't no damn rat. <laughs> There ain't no man above it. <laughs> uh, that the fuck? That <laughs> oh, that shit was so funny, man. No, uh, it's uh, my wife and kids, but flagrant. I'm sweating. And it's funny as shit. Miss Miss Pat, they, he, he, the dude that was on the Breakfast Club with Miss Pat wrote that shit to the T for Miss Pat, and she yeah. de- and she delivers the lines how I expect Miss Pat to do that shit, but not as. It's not completely 100% hood, Miss Pat, but it's like, this is some shit that she would say. Yeah. But it's 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 really good, man. Uh, I I don't know how y'all gonna get it, either bootleg or buy <laughs> BT Plus, but that shit is good. See if something torrents. Right. Yeah. Huh? I mean, if you want to play that in Discord, by all means, that shit is good. That shit, it, it, it taps on comedy. Uh, I want to say like sadness. Uh, pent up anger, doubt. It just hit. It, it hits mad emotions like out of nowhere. Like it's like it's a show that's like funny, 
it's funny for like three episodes and then like out of out of nowhere it'll have like one of them serious like AIDS episodes and shit. You Damn. know, when niggas is like serious. It's not AIDS, but it's like <laughs> you know, rape. Yeah, you know, like, oh, okay. All right. Great. Yeah, right, yo. Anything else, dog? Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we good? Yeah. I finally got All my right. lighting right in my room. <laughs> It looked like I'm on the Vlad couch and shit. Like, hey, hey what's up, Vlad? <laughs> it looked like you were talking to me to get interviewed by Neil and shit. <laughs> Don't start telling me yourself. Man. <laughs> what really happened on the hill in the episode? What else did you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so Ninja Vanish. We out of here.